this district to do what they feel is best for their kids. Thank you. Thank you. So as I begin speaking, Brian, you're welcome to make yourself uh, your way to the podium. I am reading a statement on behalf of Carol Kruger at 4013 Maryland Drive, Urbandale. I am an employee of Urbandale Middle School and I have a junior at the high school. I am asking that Urbandale does not mandate mask. I am hearing impaired and last year was miserable for me. I wear bilateral hearing aids, but I'm still unable to understand some children when they are wearing masks. I use lip reading to also be able to understand students. The Iowa law gives parents the right to do what they feel is best for their families. If parents want their children masks, they have that choice. Where is my choice? I am fully vaccinated as well as my children and family. Please do not mandate masks in Urbandale. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Brian Kloss, uh, 12217 Winston Avenue. Uh, good evening, everyone. First, let me say thank you to the board uh, who are volunteering your time and fulfilling your civic duty. Uh, supporting the community and students and staff of Urbandale, I can appreciate it's it's not an easy task that you guys have. Um, I stand uh, before you this evening to ask you to take a pause um, on your decision this evening reinstating a mask mandate for our students. Rather than vote to approve option one as presented, I'd encourage you to leave the student the status quo for now. I'd rather see us align with Ankeny and Johnston whom have already paused uh, rather than align with Des Moines Public Schools and jump to a quick decision. As a school board, this decision you make could have long-term ripple effects on the future of Urbandale community and Urbandale community schools. Families will look to this decision you've made and choose whether to move into our school district. As we are already faced with enrollment challenges compared to our suburban counterparts, let us not put ourselves in a more challenging position by being compared to the Des Moines Public Schools whose five-year graduation rate is only 85%. It seems to me aligning with our neighbors to the west and north, whose graduation rates are similar to, to ours at approximately 98%, seems to make more sense today for the future and well-being of Urbandale. So please take a pause. Further, the school year is off to a great start. You can see it in the kids' smiles and their faces. I was really surprised and honestly slightly disappointed when I heard of tonight's meeting and that our board would want to alter the success and progress these students are making this year. Why would we confuse these kids by forcing them to go back to wearing a mask when very few have tested positive, let alone dangerously ill? I'm not aware of any urban ill students who have been hospitalized due to the COVID this year. Of the more than 4,000 students throughout the school district, we have experienced very few positive COVID test results. Um, as Seth had mentioned, you know, approximately 15 based on the COVID-19 dashboard are roughly 0.374% in all. Only eight in the high school are roughly 0.6% of our 1,301 students uh, of the student body. I overheard some girls talking at my eighth grade soccer practice the other night, my body, my choice, when they were talking about the mask and this to topic coming up again. You know, with that simple thought, a couple of questions. You know, are vaccines available? Are masks available for young, younger students? If so, then yes, why, you know, why have this mandate? Why not let people make the, make the choice? I ask what right do, do you have seven uh, board members have to make this mandate? Wouldn't it be better to pause, maybe interview the community, get a poll to see, you know, where we all stand? In closing again, I ask for you to pause, not jump to a quick decision, given the thing. Thank you. I'm reading this on behalf of Bill Chamberlain, 4124 79th Street, Urbandale. I have two children at Rolling Green Elementary, first and third grade. They were able to successfully learn and slow the spread in 2021 with masks. We can do the same this year. Now is our opportunity to provide safety to those who need it most. Thank you. Leanne and Evelyn. Can you hear me okay? All right, my name is Leanne Fulton. I live at 13104 West Brook Drive. I would like to thank you for this board for their service, but I ask you why are we back here arguing about masks? Let me remind all of us 
that we are not in control of this virus and the imposing of your control to make students and staff wear masks will not make this virus go away, but rather continue to create a divide in our community. Why is it that a few board members are trusting in this authority of fear instead of continuing with the Iowa law that was put in place and has been working in our schools for the past four weeks? Could it be because this authority fits your personal agenda? And who is suffering for this personal agenda? Our children at our schools who desperately need to see us as adults in our community step up, accept others' opinions, and keep moving forward. When you choose only to follow your agenda, equality that the Urbandale District is trying to achieve is not there. That we accept others' differences and let each other make their own free will choices, wearing a mask should be a personal choice, not part of your agenda to control people. Stop saying that it's about love and kindness because force and control has nothing to do with love and kindness. Giving others choice and free will is truly showing love and kindness to each other. As a follower of Jesus Christ, I love my neighbor by allowing them to have their own free will. But God never calls me to control my neighbor force my neighbor and guilt my neighbor into doing something. We each carry our own free will. We each make choices that best fit our needs and those of our family. My hope is that this board would see the injustice that they are causing and allow families to have free will to wear a mask or not wear a mask that this board would stop serving one side of these circumstances and truly go for unity, accepting others' opinions and allowing each other to have free will and make the choice whether to wear a mask or not. Thank you. Thank you. I'm reading this on behalf of Chad Olert at 16401 Deerview Drive, Urbandale. I have a ninth grade student that goes to Urbandale High School. He has significant hearing loss in one ear. When teachers are wearing mask, masks, it is sometimes made even more difficult to hear the teacher when they are wearing a mask when he cannot see the teacher's mouth. I also believe the kid's mental well-being is impacted by mask mandates in school and is a detriment to their social skills they are building at a young age. Allow those who wish to wear a mask to wear a mask, but allow the parents to decide if their child should wear a mask or not. High school students are eligible to be vaccinated. Urbandale High School should not be mandated with masks as all students and faculty are eligible for the vaccine within that building. I ask the board to not impose mask mandates on our high school students. Thank you. Hello, I'm Evelyn Fulton. Say that, this is her. Hello, my name is Evelyn Fulton and I am a seventh grader at Irvindale Middle School. Masks should be a choice, not a mandate. Forcing students in this district and in our country is coming between the freedom the U.S. has. We are a free country and we should be able to choose. Masks limit socialization. In my own experiences, masks reduce socialization between me and my peers. While wearing masks last year, I couldn't see new people's faces or talk to them clearly while wearing a mask. Plus, not seeing peers' smiles is awful. Masks limit all facial expressions, which is then difficult to read others' emotions. You can't imagine the feeling that we had last spring when it was a decision. Ta talking with my peers today, at least 50% of them said if they were forced to wear a mask, they would rather be homeschooled. That's serious. When I look around my classrooms at the middle school, I only see a handful of kids wearing masks. We as students are capable of making our own decisions. From my own experiences, side effects I have gone through from wearing a mask include headaches, ear pain, scratchy throat, shortness of breath, and it's uncomfortable around my neck. You cannot do anything to make this virus and others go away by mandating masks. 
If you cannot make, you cannot make any numbers get any better by forcing us all to wear masks. If you choose to mandate masks, you are going against the equality goal Urbandale strives for. Again, wearing masks should be an individual choice. Caring for the Urbandale district does not mean controlling us as students. Thank you. Thank you. I'm reading this on behalf of David Falsgraf at 4398th Street, Urbandale. As COVID descended on the world last year, our third child was born, immune compromised. My wife and I appreciated the district's response to COVID during the previous school year, and we're glad that we lived in the Urbandale School District. While Governor Reynolds emphasized personal choice when announcing her ban on mask mandates for schools, her decision disregarded medically sound guidelines issued by federal health agencies and studies that have validated the positive impact masks have. Still, we sent our son to first grade a few weeks ago and hoped for the best in spite of the difficult and in our opinion, unnecessary situation. I understand that no one wants to wear a mask. I wish that pictures of my son and his classmates didn't have their smiles covered up, truly. But I also believe that patience and an emphasis on doing things we'd rather not make to make sure the greater good is served is something that matters and that I want to model for my kids. This season will pass, but it's not over yet, especially for those under 12 who aren't yet eligible to be vaccinated, for the immune, for the immune compromised, and for those who face higher risk of exposure for other reasons. I ask that the school board enact a mask mandate for urban Hill schools effective as soon as possible. I also ask that the school board draft a clear metric for when that mandate can be lifted that takes case positive and vaccination availability into consideration. Thank you for your time and for your leadership. Thank you. Members of the board, Peter Sand, 4509 76th Street. I actually second the last uh, sentence of that speaker's comments. Uh, I have no illusions about what's gonna happen tonight. I know this is a done deal. The very moment I heard that federal judge Pratt had enjoined the state law, I knew this board would convene quickly and slap masks on all the students and staff. I could spend my time pointing out things like the low rate of student affect of, uh, by this illness or the fact that not even countries in Europe are doing this to their kids, but I won't waste my breath. Instead, I state to this board that if you claim to be acting responsibly, you will tell your students in public the criteria that underlies this decision and when that criteria will allow the lifting of the mandate you're about to impose. Tell us what criteria you're going to use to decide that this pandemic is over and is now endemic in nature, just like colds and flu. Or are we to have masks and distancing permanently in our schools? Is this just a fact of life forever, that kids just wear masks to school? That's just the way it is, permanently. If it's not permanent, then tell us the criteria by which you're going to declare that we're moving on from this. I doubt you can even articulate any criteria because as far as I can tell, this is all just about whether the right people who are vocal enough claim to be worried about COVID and that we're gonna impose on everyone else so long as they claim to be frightened. Meanwhile, the media is all focused on keeping this hysteria going such that it'll never die down. Tell us your criteria for deciding when to drop the mask mandate you're about to impose. Just tell us the criteria so that we all know what benchmark statistic to watch. If you cannot choose a criteria for why we are doing this, along with an explanation as to why that criteria makes sense for this district, then we know what's going on. You don't wanna be boxed in and you want to just exercise the power without any explanation or justification at all. I know you're going to do this regardless of how few students have been wearing masks or how the vast majority of the parents feel and despite the general culture of liberty we have in this country. None of those things have moved this board up till now. But at least have the decency to articulate a basis for your action that also makes clear to all of us, when does this end? I'm reading the statement on behalf of Heidi Larson, 7326 Monroe Court, Urbandale. My name is Heidi Larson. I reside at 7326 Monroe Court, Urbandale. I am speaking in favor of universal masking in schools. 
My son is a fourth grader at Karen Acres. My four, my four-year-old twins are pre-K students at Olmstead. I wish I could be with you in person today to express the urgent need for students to be masked at school. Unfortunately and ironically, my daughter, one of my, four, one of my four-year-olds, is hospitalized with a respiratory virus and I am with her. She has a rare disease, metachromatic leukodystrophia. Because of her disease, she is incapable of adequately clearing her lungs on her own, meaning that even the slightest cold can lead to respiratory issues. In this instance, a case of rhinovirus, the common cold, has led to bacterial pneumonia. That we can treat. Thankfully, she does not have COVID. Were that the case, I imagine this photo would be very different. And she submitted a photo of her daughter. She would likely be in the intensive care unit and intubated. The adoption of House File 847, preventing universal masking in schools, made the decision for us to send Maggie to school an agonizing one. While Maggie is high risk, she still deserves the right to have an education. Being in a classroom setting with daily interaction with teachers and other children is truly the best thing we can do for her neurologically. But given House File 847, it also puts her at a great risk. She deserves the right to be around children her own age. And because she has two healthy school-age brothers, it's not so simple as keep her home. The only real way to keep her safe would be to deny her brothers that same opportunity for education in the classroom setting. We have been placed in a no-win situation. It has completely robbed the joy of sending my children to school this year. I should not have to worry about my child dying simply because they attend school. For most, being forced to wear a mask is a minor inconvenience. For families like my own, it is a matter of life and death. We are literally entrusting our children's lives with the school district. We trust that you will make decisions in the best interest of the health and safety of all students, especially the most vulnerable ones. Our state legislature chose not to protect Iowa youth. A choice now lays before you to protect our children or, like our elected leaders, stick your heads in the sand to appease a few while neglecting those at risk. Please reimpose masking to protect high-risk and immunocompromised students within the walls of their schools. Please protect children like Maggie. Thank you. Daniel Gutman, 4117 77th Place Circle. I'm a special education teacher and also candidate for school board this fall. I don't wake up excited to put my mask on. Nobody wants to wear a mask, but I do. I wear a mask because I've seen quality, compassionate educators leave our field due to their own or a loved one's medical condition putting them at greater risk for severe COVID-19. We've lost enough good teachers already, and others are on the fence. With every good teacher we've lost, that leaves us with one less person willing to struggle through reading and math with your child, tie their shoes, and the million other things that good teachers do. For those educators, I choose to wear a mask. As a special education teacher, I'm blessed to know some awesome kiddos with health, physical, or cognitive challenges that truly make masks imperative to an accessible and safe education. For those kiddos, I choose to wear a mask in school. I want schools to stay open. Teaching virtually is not a viable option as structured in 2020. Too many students fell behind and didn't receive a quality education. There are measures advocated by doctors and public health officials that we know reduces the risk of transmitting COVID-19. This is the overwhelming consensus of the experts. We want to keep case numbers low. The calls for going virtual will increase if COVID-19 spreads. To keep schools open, I choose to wear a mask. God willing, this pandemic will someday end. With freedom comes responsibility to others. Sacrifice isn't reserved for folks in scrubs, public servants, and those in uniform. In support of our community, and in solidarity with those too often shouldering the weight of sacrifice, I wear a mask in schools. One small sacrifice I can make to support the most vulnerable in our community. Unfortunately, too many people have detached their freedom from responsibility for the greater good. Because of that, this board and the administration of Urbandale Schools is called to provide leadership. You have heard arguments and opinions both for and against mask use. 
these arguments do not hold an equal weight of evidence. Given the recent court ruling, I encourage Urbandale schools to make the right choice for our community and take steps to ensure that masks are worn in our schools. Your decision tonight will send a clear message whether Urbandale schools will make evidence-based decisions to provide the best education for our kids, especially when considering measures controversial in our community. Leaders must account for the direction the data, science, and experts lead us. Thank you. I'm reading this on behalf of John Lovell, 4003 Bel Air Drive, Urbandale. I wanted to urge the school board to not mandate masks for the district students. This is a highly polarizing issue that should be left to parents and the students to decide. No other health decision is determined by the school board, and this one should not be either. There is considerable conflicting data on the efficacy, detrimental, and long-term effects of prolonged use of masks in development. I feel there is reason for pause and caution in any requirements in this area. I want to maintain all health decisions for my children. Anyone who wishes to wear a mask is welcome to and should do so. The school board should direct the education of my children only, and even that within certain parameters. Thank you. John Herman, I live at uh, 2738 uh, 51st Street in Des Moines. I've got two girls in the Urbandale school system, and both of them used to like school. And uh, they don't like it as much anymore because of the masks. And they don't understand why they're on, why they're off, why they're on, why they're off. And, and I, I don't either. I don't understand them, period. But seeing as you, I was taught in the Marine Corps to lead by example, and I can see up on the stage that some have them on, some have them off. Um, probably even more confusing as they watch this uh, on the internet. But um, I guess if, if I had anything prepared, what I'd like to say is that when does it stop? Pete said it best. I, I wish I had his notes. Um, when does it stop? You can't give us a reason why they're going back on because if it's by the numbers that are on your website, 0.010% right now are testing positive. It doesn't seem to be a problem. So if that's going to put them back on, how low does it have to go to get them back off again? And that's what Pete wanted. That's what I want. Thank you. Thank you. I'm reading this on behalf of Kara Rainey, who is at 4123 127th Street in Urbandale. Masking our children is wrong, harmful, and unscientific. Perhaps the most compelling reason we should not require masks in school is carbon dioxide levels. A recent study finds children wearing masks are exposed to extremely high and dangerous levels of carbon dioxide. According to the study in the Journal of American Medical Association's Pediatrics, the safe limit for carbon dioxide in a closed room is 2,000 ppm, and the mask-wearing children measured at much higher levels. Most masks are not worn properly and are vectors for pathogens. Masking is a psychological stressor for children and distracts learning and reduces the ability to communicate. The survival rates among American children with confirmed COVID cases is more than 99.99%. Children have a higher likelihood of being negatively impacted by a car accident or the flu. Please allow the parents and students to choose if they want to wear masks. Don't force a mask mandate on our children. Do the right thing and vote no to a school mask mandate. Thank you. Hi, my, oh, hi, my name is Carter Smith. I live on 12819 Timberline Drive. I currently go to Urban Hill High School and, it's been, and I'm a senior. It is really nice seeing all my friends' masks, friends' faces again after not having a normal school year since my freshman year. I believe that everybody should have the right to choose if they like to wear a mask or not, especially people who are vaccinated or not should more have the decision. If, if you're not vaccinated, you should be preferred to wear a mask. If you're vaccinated, it'd be, you shouldn't have the right to not, to not wear a mask anymore. But I think the students should be the ones behind the decisions they are not any of the parents or any of the school board members, mainly the students and students and teachers should have the right to choose. Thank you. Thank you, Carter. On behalf of Shelley Olson at 7408 Wilden Drive, Urbandale, 
Thank you for taking the time to review my comments. I have two children that attend Karen Acres, and my property taxes help to fund Urbandale schools. I am also a healthcare worker, and I am employed at the highest risk job there is for exposure to SARS COVID virus. I understand the risk and fear surrounded this virus, and I would like to share my thoughts on the mask mandate consideration. I ask on behalf of my daughters to please not require masks to be worn. Please continue to honor parents by allowing us to make the decision on what is best for our children. My daughters requested multiple times to have me contact the school to end the mask requirement last year. They reiterated to me numerous times the various challenges that wearing a mask caused, such as inability to breathe well. The risk for most children is low when it comes to symptoms of COVID-19, as I am sure you are well aware. I understand the desire to appear to be doing something when so much is out of our control, but this is not the path to go down. If you are for mandating masks, please ask yourself when will it end? COVID-19 will never go away completely, which logically means that mask wearing will never go away completely if implemented. This pandemic has resulted in neurotic behavior and feelings for many. It has resulted in policies that are divisive and intrusive. There are enough changes and challenges in our children's lives due to the state of our world as it is. Do not add more. Thank you. Zach Bader, I live at uh, 2720 Carroll Circle in Urbandale. I um, want to start by thanking the board, the administration, the teachers for their work over the last couple of years and for everything that you've had to go through, um, not just your work, but the scrutiny that you're under, the restrictions that you're facing. Um, it's, I'm sure it's no fun to be sit standing on this side of the microphone. I'm sure it's really not fun to be on that side and to be receiving that scrutiny all the time. So thank you for your dedication to doing that and, and hearing these things out. Um, I'm speaking in favor of requiring masks in our schools uh, to heed the basically unanimous recommendations and warnings of the medical community and to protect kids like mine. I have kids in second grade and kindergarten at, at Urbandale. Kids like mine that don't even have the option of getting vaccinated yet. We know that Iowa's COVID numbers are surging with a variant that's more hazardous to kids. We know that many of our kids still can't get vaccinated. We know that our nation's children's hospitals, including Blank and in Des Moines and Stead Hospital in Iowa City, are putting out repeated pleas for schools to require masks. And now a federal judge has given our, restored our school district's ability to make its own decisions. And so I guess if not now, I wonder how bad it would have to get before we'd act. And I'm not sure why, as we look at what's happening around the rest of the country, I'm not sure why we're committed to driving, why we'd be committed to driving our schools and our hospitals to that point that we've seen in other parts of the country, to that breaking point. Thanks to some recent improvements in reporting, I know that there are COVID cases in my daughter's grade. My son has a condition that makes him higher risk if he gets COVID. We can continue masking our kids and hope that that's enough, but um, that's not much of a choice, especially when we know that the effectiveness of masking depends on everyone doing it. Instead, we need the choice to send our kids into schools that are able to follow what are the basically unanimous recommendations of public health officials and medical professionals in the middle of a pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Dustin and Christine Speck, 1417 Valley View Court coming. We are the parents of two children in UCSD and we would like to start out by saying how proud we are to have two children who have been in the district since they were in kindergarten. They are now open enrolled in Urbandale High School since we've moved to Cumming, Iowa in June of 2020. One of the main reasons we've made one of the main reasons we've made our home was due to the quality of education and family-oriented focus in UCSD. Our children have successfully participated in school and athletic activities without masks with great success this year, and we are grateful for our kids being able to participate in person. In relation to the new board topic being revisited for mask mandates in school, we are not in favor of a mask mandate and support the rights of everyone to choose to wear masks or choose to manage their lives as they feel fit. We feel it is abusive to put kids in germ-ridden masks for eight hours a day. And for our daughters, wearing masks has only caused more stress and confusion in their lives. 
when they really need to be focusing on their education, not mandates. If masks work, then those who choose to wear them should be protected. Again, let this be a choice. We understand you're in a difficult position with so many passionate people and opinions weighing in on this issue. We urge you to let parents have a choice. Just as we have a choice on where we live, what schools our kids go to, whether they attend school in person or online, what vaccines we feel necessary for the health of our kids, and whether they wear masks at school. If you have any questions or need follow-up, please don't hesitate to reach out. Some additional information that was provided uh, in articles, CDC schools with mask mandates didn't see statistically different rates of COVID transmission from schools with optional policies from August 25th, 2021. To paraphrase some key points from that article, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, in May 2021, published a large-scale study of COVID transmission in U.S. schools. The study, which analyzed some 90,000 elementary students in 169 Georgia schools from November 16th to December 11th, 2020, found that there was no statistically significant difference in schools that required students to wear masks compared to schools where masks were optional. In addition, there's no evidence of more outbreaks in schools in those countries, the UK, Scandinavia, Switzerland, Netherlands, France, Italy, relative to schools in the US where the solid majority of kids wore masks for an entire academic year and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. These countries, along with the World Health Organization, whose child masking guidance differs substantially from the CDC's recommendations, have explicitly recognized that the decision to mask students carries with it potential academic <coughs> and social harms for children. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jessica. I live on 4508 70th Place, and my son is a kindergartner at Olmstead Elementary. We tell our kids, be your best self. As parents, as educators, as loved ones, we must walk the walk. We must be our best selves. Olmsted uses the acronym C-A-R-E-S, <coughs> CARES, to guide children and staff to be their best selves. The C stands for co cooperation, A for assertiveness, R for responsibility, E for empathy, and S for self-regulation. This directly applies to the decision we are making today. Cooperation. We must cooperate and co compromise to develop a safe learning environment for all students and staff. Assertiveness. We must be assertive and have the courage to do what's right and what's best. Responsibility. We have a responsibility to our children, our educators, our community, and the well-being of everyone. Empathy, we must dig deep. Feel the fear of parents sending their immune-compromised child into an unmasked community. Feel the frustration of parents having to choose between their child's safety, their child's physical and mental health, and receiving the best education deserved by all students. And finally, self-regulation. We must model self-regulation by stop fighting amongst ourselves. Let's not forget why we're here, what we're talking about, and what's really at the heart of this discussion. This is not about control. This is about selflessness. This, there is a worldwide pandemic. Thousands have died, including children, and teachers. I keep hearing about the number of low COVID cases, but these infections don't stay at school. They spread exponentially among families and communities, possibly leading to more unnecessary deaths. One death is too many. This is about protecting all of our children. This is about protecting the families they go home to. This is about protecting our educators, our superheroes who selflessly guide our children and shape our future. This is about all of our children and every child's right to an education. 
Children don't care if they have to wear a mask or not. They are flexible and resilient. Thank you. On behalf of Brooke and Brad Jacobson, 9105 Boston Avenue, Urbandale. We want to thank the Urbandale Board of Directors for their commitment to protecting the health and safety of our community throughout the pandemic. We continue to support a mask mandate in schools to protect students, staff, and our community at large. Thank you. My name is Ashley Noakes. I live at 7800 Iltis Drive in Urbandale. I have one daughter in the Urbandale Middle School. I am here today not only on behalf of my baby, but on behalf of all the children within the Urbandale Community School District. First and foremost, my daughter will not be forced to wear a mask in order to receive her education. <coughs> it is public knowledge that children are not high spreaders of COVID. The fear mongering, the lies, the bullying has got to stop. There have been hundreds of studies done on masks and not one has proven them to be effective. Masks are nothing but a cesspool of germs that weaken the immune system. In order for the human immune system to be strong, it must be exposed to the world and challenged to retain functionality. Forcing our children to wear a mask for the duration of the school day is unethical and unconstitutional. Wearing them for hours on end causes headaches, reduces ability to concentrate, fatigue, among other things, and damages the cognitive development of children. Do you people ever consider the mental impact that this has on our children? Since the beginning of the pandemic, suicide rates have skyrocketed, mostly being in the age group of children and adolescents. We as parents know what is best for our children and their health. We will not raise our children under forced fear and stress. Forcing our children to wear a mask for hour, hours on end <laughs> because adults are scared is child abuse. I will not raise my child under stress and fear. The happiness of our children is top priority over your fears and your feelings. You do not have any right to go above a child's parents and say when they can breathe fresh air. The forced fear needs to stop. This is America. We have rights and freedoms that will not be ripped away because the TVs in your living rooms have blocked your critical thinking skills. If you want people to wear masks, make it optional. If people are scared, then they themselves can wear them or their children can be homeschooled. Their fear does not come above our children's rights. Freedom of choice is all we are asking. Adults who are scared need to deal with their own feelings and their own bodies. Children are innocent and pure, and as parents, we must protect them from the mental abuse that people like you and the government and the media has forced upon us for over a year now. Do not force our children to wear masks. Make them optional. My daughter will not be forced to cater to your adult, adult feelings and fears, and as a mother, I will never stop fighting for the rights of my children. I've warned you, and most of you have been courteous and civil. I hope that you can continue that behavior. We're about a third of the way through. On behalf of Micah Loveless at 4328 126th Street, Urbandale, my name is Micah Loveless. My wife and I, along with our two sons, fourth grade and second grade at Webster, moved to the Urbandale School District this past summer. We love this community and are eager to raise our family here. I want to express in the strongest way possible my opposition to any mask mandate being considered by the Urbanville School Board. Wearing a face mask should be a decision left to each family or individual and not imposed district-wide. We have seen time and time again that face mask mandates are simply for theater, not taken seriously or even followed by those who sought to impose them. Our children need to be focused on learning math reading, writing, and history, not unnecessary face mandates. Thank you. Heather Reed, 3317 Melanie Drive. I represent four children in our district. My husband, Nick, and I aim to raise them as confident and effective adults in our community. Believe it or not, I know what's best for my children, especially when it comes to their health. I do not consent for you to decide what's best for their health. Your track record doesn't sit well with me. For example, our school lunches are loaded with sugar and processed foods. Sugar suppresses our immune system. If the goal is to not be sick, but to promote health, then, we shouldn't, re should, then shouldn't we remove the sugar that so easily suppresses our body's ability to be healthy? So your record of making healthy decisions doesn't stand well with me. Here's my plan. 
If you decide to mandate masks, our children will not go to school when that, when that begins. Instead, we will spend the day peacefully protesting and filling our, our medical or religious max, mask ex exemption forms. We will then take these forms to school the following day in which you will not deny my child's right to an education nor force them to wear masks. Parents, will you join me? I am a youth coach and I represent many families and students in the Urbandale area. In fact, right now my youth group is meeting right down the street without me, but I am here for them. You see, God has called me to teach them the truths of the Bible. He has called me to teach them to love him and to love others. I expect my students to honor one another. Honor is doing more than expected. It's having a good attitude and it's considering others better than yourself. I expect this in hopes that one day when they become leaders such as yourself, they will be the best they can be because God loves them. The behavior observed by certain board members who ultimately reflect and represent this group as a whole is embarrassing and wrong. My children and youth aren't allowed to behave the way that some of you have. As, and if they did, there would be consequences. You have not built a culture of learning where students and families feel welcome. You have failed. Code Ethics 233 says board members will listen and respect the opinions of others. In case you've forgotten the definition of respect, it is to admire someone or something deeply or avoid harming or interfering with. Again, members of this board have failed. Dr. Deka, you have been given a difficult task, but you have been called and empowered to this position for a reason. This, this sickly, selfish, slanderous character that is pride-filled, arrogant, and immature behavior that has been allowed to go on in this group needs to stop now. Get control, make hard choices, and do the next right thing. You don't want these attributes to define who you are. What this group has produced this past year is nothing to be proud of. I request the immediate removal of board member Stacey Anderson for her recent actions on TikTok. And parents who believe in Jesus, we need to pray. We need to pray for them. We need to command evil to leave. And we need to claim the blood of Jesus over this school for our children's sake. Thank you. On behalf Let of Tamsin. Let me point out again, as many of these speakers, including Ms. Reed, have requested civil behavior and listening to each other. So let me reiterate to all of you, you are called, as she stated, to listen. And please do that respectfully. The next statement is from an Urbanel Middle School student, Tamsin Saylor. Dear Urbanel Public School Board, my name is Tamsin Saylor and I am an eighth grade student at Urbanel Middle School. I am in favor of instating a universal mask mandate in our school district. I think this will greatly benefit us in many ways. For example, it will help keep the students who are unvaccinated safer. No matter the reason for the student's lack of vaccination, age, family, political view, immunity issue, etc., they should be able to have a safe school experience. One of the first things we learn at all school levels is the basic rules and procedures, and safety is one of them. Masks will help people be safer at school. Currently, one third of all COVID cases in Polk County are occurring in people under 18 which has a strong connection to school-related cases. From my perspective as a student who currently wears a mask, I know that I would feel safer if people wore masks at school because I know there are many people who do not take COVID seriously enough to be safe. Having assigned lunch tables and therefore not knowing the vaccine status of those people, it would help put my mind at ease. If we catch this problem now, there will be less of a chance we will have to deal with it or go online later. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pam Grono, and I live at 12912 Westbrook Drive in Urbandale. 
My personal stance on the topic of tonight's meeting is I believe it should be the parent's choice on whether or not to mask their children. The truth is, after doing my own research and listening to many doctors and industrial hygienists on the subject matter, I believe masks do my children more harm than good. And I do not believe masks are effective at stopping the virus from spreading. I also believe that the masks get in the way of my children's learning. I have an autistic son and another son with sensory issues and both struggle with attention. Masking adds another layer of distraction to their learning. It's not that I don't care about others. I really hate it when the board implies that if you aren't masking, it means you don't care. But I believe my children are picking up more germs as they are constantly touching their masks, and I believe their oxygen level is affected negatively, as some doctors and industrial hygienists have said it reduces oxygen levels by as much as 20%. So many families have different concerns for their children, whether it be medical or learning concerns. By mandating masks, you are alienating many families who have strong reasons for opposing them, which is why at the school level, you should be providing a free and appropriate public education to all and allow the parents to choose what is best for their child when it comes to their health. I am the mother of three sons and their father and I alone should have the right to make this decision on their behalf. I am hopeful that our administration will continue to listen to the parents and put their focus where it belongs which is on our children's education. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Carol Halford at 4313 74th Street, Urbandale, we are in favor of the parents making the decision on whether or not our children will wear a mask. Thank you. My name is Troy Smith, and I live at 8313 Parkview Drive here in Urbandale. My background is that I'm a retired Army Special Forces Medical Sergeant. I also have my degree in social sciences with a significant background in the physical sciences due to having a pre-medical focus in an attempt or in a future endeavor to go to medical school. I believe that this, this gives me a unique perspective and an objective lens in order to digest this massive amount of data and information that we're given on a daily basis. My question then, if this mask mandate is to protect the children, where is the evidence for that? The statistical chance of a child under the age of 18 dying of COVID-19 is 0.0003% chance. And now a proper response to that might be, any chance is too much. So do you drive a car? Does anyone in this room drive a car or drive their children in their car? Your statistical chance of dying in a vehicle accident is 1%, many thousand percent chance higher than a child dying of COVID-19. Now the next question is, is the mask mandate to protect teachers? Viable question. The CDC has displayed evidence that says in previous studies that the most common transmission in schools is staff to staff, followed by staff to student, where student to staff is very uncommon, and student to student is even more uncommon. But it's not nothing. So another data point. Of the 680,000 approximately deaths in the United States, 5% of those deaths have died of COVID alone. You can find this on the CDC's website as well. That is 0.08%. The rest had four, on average, comorbidities. So, with that data in mind, have we taken an anonymous poll of the teachers to determine what is our average comorbidity rate for teachers and staff? I suspect it's significantly below four. Now that we've debunked the risk to children and reduced the idea of the risk to teachers, we can talk about the possible negative effects to children. Young children especially, need to monitor facial expressions and combine those with verbal cues and other body language in order to 
socially develop. On top of this, mask. Thank you. On behalf of Amy and Eric Saylor, 7904 Alpine Drive, Urbandale, with a federal restraining order now placed on Iowa House File 847, the state's mask mandate ban, we are strongly urging that the Urbandale School Board immediately reimpose a mask mandate for the district. As the judge noted in his ruling, the drastic increase in the number of coronavirus cases formed the basis for his decision. In reviewing the ruling, we were shocked to see it reported that some public schools in Iowa are experiencing COVID-19 infection rates at upwards of 60%, that of last year's total for the entire school year. On September 13th, the Polk County Health Department reported that 735 new COVID cases were diagnosed between September 10th and 12th, 34% of which were in children under 18. That is frighteningly high. And given the exponential rate by which COVID cases have been proven to increase, will only get worse under the status quo, since well over half of total, the total number of students enrolled in the district are not yet eligible to be vaccinated. There is a simple way to help stem this infectious tide, mandate that students enrolled in public schools wear masks. The CDC states that while priority should be placed on returning to in-person learning for the 2021-22 school year, the highly contagious Delta variant has led them to recommend universal masking by all students aged two and older, staff, teachers, and visitors to K-12 schools, regardless of vaccination status. In addition to other practices such as social distancing, improving ventilation, and washing hands, their guidance emphasizes these layered prevention strategies to protect students, teachers, staff, visitors, and other members of their households and to ensure in-person learning can continue in a safe environment for everyone. There is no question as to what is best for the Urbandale students, especially those who have no option to be vaccinated and for whom universal masking is the only significant means of protection. Objections allegedly based in principles of freedom and liberty are nonsense. In any civilized society, freedoms that threaten public safety are constantly subject to restriction. I am not free to run red lights while driving on the left side of the road in my unlicensed car after drinking a bottle of gin. The safety of the majority, and particularly those who are least able to protect themselves, must be paramount in this situation, which makes the reimposition of a mask mandate the only moral and ethical option. Thank you. Ashley and I'm at 3203 88th Street. I'm the mother of two children in Urbandale and they are elementary age girls. One is autistic and the other one is behind in speech. Uh, my autistic daughter has sensory issues. She does not like to wear a mask and she will not wear a mask. She is not resilient and she is not flexible. That's part of who she is. And so forcing our children to wear a mask is going against her right to a free and fair education. It's not a one size fits all. And everybody, it's a choice. It's my choice as a parent. I know my children, I know my daughter. And I think if you've heard from most of us here, a lot of us here so far, that it should be our choice and our decision. If you as an adult want to be vaccinated, that's your choice. I see where this is going. Um, I have a feeling there's gonna be next vaccine mandates for children to be in school. Uh, you guys. It seems to be a done deal, according to some of the posts that I've read uh, about some of your board members, that the decision's already been made, that you are going to do this mass mandate, even though we do not want that. I want to, for the people, just one of the board members, just so you can hear. So did you hear about the federal court ruling today in Iowa? We can do mask mandates now. Local control has been restored. And the judge references two affidavits written by Iowa school board members in the federal court case that was filed from the ACLU. And guess who one of the board members is? Is it you? Go bad bitch, go bad bitch, go bad bitch, go! So did you hear about the federal? That is Stacy Anderson. Stacy, I want to say to you that you're not a bad bitch your trash. Your opinion should not be inserted into the decision-making of our children. 
you need to, you need to cut. Yeah. So you've cut me off? We're going to, yes. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, please. The next comment I'm reading is on behalf of Michelle Breach at 9504 Monroe Court, Urbandale. I could address the board about my own family tonight, my 86-year-old great aunt, my parents, my unvaccinated children, and my child I'm expecting in a few months, who I'm hoping will be protected by my child, his teachers and classmates wearing masks in school. Or I could remind the board of our community, which is strained by full hospitals once again. Instead, I speak to your moral and legal duty to protect students. I don't believe a mask mandate or any health and safety measures should be decided by individual parents or be based on the majority opinion in our community. Decisions with this weight should be decided based on evidence. In this case, with an eye to CDC guidance and with a special concern for the impact on the most vulnerable. We are here tonight because a federal judge ruled not allowing school districts to protect students by issuing a mask mandate violates the rights of those vulnerable among us. The judge states, a universal masking requirement instituted by a school is a reasonable modification that would enable disabled students to have equal access to the necessary in-person school program services and activities. A mask mandate protects all students, but the judge's ruling places a special obligation on school districts to protect the safety and rights of students with disabilities. I believe this obligation to protect students is a moral duty the board must uphold, but if I understand the court's decision, it also is a legal obligation for school districts to protect the health and safety of students under the ADA. Governor Reynolds may think the next important lawsuit is her appeal, but I believe for school boards and districts, the next important lawsuit will be at their feet if they fail to act to protect the health and safety of all students now. Please be brave in protecting students now. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jessica Lindsay. Wow, that was loud, sorry. Uh, 3801 82nd Street. Um, I've got three kids in the district, uh, two in elementary and one in the middle school. Um, my job is to ensure that vaccines are pure, safe, potent, and effective. Uh, my degree is in microbiology. I don't want my kids wearing masks. Um, I feel like there are many unintended consequences. Um, wearing masks causes detrimental effects on face recognition and identification, communication and social emotional interaction, not to mention multiple studies that talk about uh, breathing resistance with wearing masks, respiratory rate, blood pressure, cerebral vasodilation, heart rate, respirator impairment, exhaustion and fatigue, drowsiness, dizziness, headache, psychovegetative effect, decreased empathy, itch, skin irritation, acne, rhinitis, voice disorder, false security, as well as bacterial, viral, and fungal contamination with the masks. Um, my concern really is like, what are the unintended consequences? Uh, we weren't meant to wear them, whether you believe our ability to breathe comes from God or from our evolution. We didn't evolve or we were not created that way. Um, I had a supervisor last sept a year ago in September, his daughter was 11 and took her life. And I believe it was from the situation we've been facing. So um, I know that uh, the, vac the virus itself is 30 to 500 nanometers. A surgical mask, if worn properly, will protect from 300 to 500. So quite a bit of that's getting out. Um, so my position is no masks. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Brianna Kruger, 4013 Maryland Drive, Urbandale, I don't think putting a mask mandate back in place would be good, especially for special education students. Already, there is a shortage of people to support these students so some already aren't getting the education they need. If a mask mandate comes back, most of the time with these special education children 
will just be telling them to put their mask up instead of helping them develop and grow. Most of the children I'm around have sensory issues or other conditions which make it a major struggle to attempt to get them to wear masks. Masks also hinder social bonds, which are crucial for all students, but especially special education students and their social emotional growth. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Stu Essex. I live at 4425 76th Street. I'm the father of a sixth grade at Urbandale Middle School, a graduate of Urbandale High School, class of 2000, and have lived in this community for more than 30 years. Before I get into my other comments, I want to express gratitude to teachers, coaches, counselors, cafeteria staff, janitorial staff, and building administrators who help guide our children's learning and growth. They do an amazing job. I know this meeting is a sham. Most people here know this meeting is a sham. How an appointed federal judge can overrule an elected state governor and legislature is confounding, but that's a discussion for a different forum. Why the school board is in such a rush to reimpose an unnecessary and unjustified mask mandate is why we're here. What is the justification for you to take away the choice of families to make decisions they feel is best for them? What is the criteria to end it? Why is there such a rush when there's not a significant number of cases in the district as reported on the district website? When students are again thriving, seeing each other's smiles and laughs, being able to communicate, why not delay a vote as our peer community districts are doing? You're not doing your job. There's a clear dereliction of duty by many and most of you. Everyone has the right to believe what they believe, including being passionate about it, but imposing those beliefs on others and trying to shame those who disagree. I say trying because you're not going to shame me and many others out here. Trying to shame those who disagree, laugh out, boast. That's disgraceful. Those aren't values I try to instill and teach my daughter. While I intended to speak tonight, I'm speaking with a bit more emotion after seeing the videos posted by self-proclaimed Bad B. If you listen to those videos, one of the which was just played, listen to what she has proudly put out before this meeting, about this meeting and mandate, and throughout the last year. The hypocrisy is vivid. It is completely irresponsible to insert partisan politics and beliefs into family and education decisions. None of us making the case for allowing our, ch our children to breathe freely, allowing our children the opportunity to grow academically, emotionally, and socially, None of us are arguing to take away your choice or your family's choice to wear a mask. Instead, you want to take away my family's choice and other families' choice to accomplish those things I just mentioned. <clears throat> just like last year when you prevented our children the opportunity to attend classes in person full time, held them back, eliminated opportunity, wasted taxpayers' money, this community's money, increased mental health challenges for what? Your decision on the mask made is not about the kids, family, teachers, and staff. Science tells you that. There are studies that have been referenced tonight showing development in parity, impairment resulting from masks, other studies showing that there's no statistical difference in your chances of contracting COVID or any other respiratory virus by wearing a non-surgical, non-N95 mask, and there isn't many that did do or wear, wear, wear those. Your decisions are again about furthering a political agenda, and that has no business being furthered by sticking our children in the middle. That is not what leadership, and I use that term loosely referring to many of you sitting up there, that is not what you were elected to do. You would rather see our children fail if you had to advance your agenda. I have no doubt our children in this community will overcome the challenges that resulted from this board's inadequate decision making. They are resilient, we are resilient. To take away one's freedom of choice, even the freedom to make the wrong one, is to manip manipulate them. On behalf of Bradley Smith, 3416 Eula Drive, Urbandale. I was just notified that my child was exposed to COVID at Jensen Valeria School. Had the school moved quickly on mask mandates, the exposure would be far less likely to infect my child or any other child at the school. Urbandale Schools needs to act promptly. COVID has no place to wait for adults to make decisions and to tell the truth. There is nothing to decide. Unless educated people are now afraid of the anti-mask, anti-science nonsense. Many anti-mask people are very vocal, but that does not equate to being knowledgeable. The CDC and the vast majority of studies show that masks reduce transmission of this disease. Many anti-maskers point to the fact that few children die. They fail to point out that those children bring COVID home and to the community, causing many other people to be hospitalized or die. Polk County was good at masking last year. We had one of the lowest rates of hospitalization and death in the state. Other counties suffered for their failure to mask. For example, Polk County, one in every 741 residents died. Sioux County, one in every 421 residents die, died. And Ringgold County, one in every 191 residents died. 
Please note, average age was not the key factor. Sioux County had an average age that is younger than Polk. And of course, there are those who say, no one is stopping your child from masking. That sentence proves that the individual knows absolutely nothing about how the benefits of masking are derived. Most benefits, most benefit is derived from stopping virus-filled respiratory droplets from escaping into the air via exhaling. Urbandale schools are responsible for the safety of all children, as well as the community. They are not responsible for the appeasement of people who refuse to accept science and medicine. That would be a travesty for a school to deny science. We are mere months away from vaccines for children under age 12. How hard is it for people to provide a safe environment for children in school when a temporary and simple mask is the only thing asked of them? Compare that to the difficulty in telling a child that mom or dad or granddad died after the school failed to do its job. A mask mandate is needed now. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Corey Starr. I'm at 4731 80th Place. Um, just want to start off with a couple of statistics from the Iowa COVID website. Um, zero to 17 year olds account for 0% deaths. 18 to 29 also account for 0% deaths. I have had my two kids in, in a daycare center since May of 2020 and now they're going to the Urbandale schools with no masks and no issues. Plus all studies have shown that areas that implement mask mandates have seen increased levels of infection and Dr. Fauci himself has confirmed this. He said it was due to misuse and not following the proper mask wearing guidance. Do we really expect students to follow the CDC mask wearing guidance? Improper mask usage leads to higher rates of infection than not wearing a mask at all. A study published Wednesday in the Journal of the American Medical Association and Pediatrics section found that the wearing of nose and mouth coverings by children leads to an increase in carbon dioxide levels in both inhaled and exhaled air while wearing a mask. The results found an average of 13,000 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the air inhaled by children while wearing masks, which is six, more than six times what German law allows in a closed room. Another study's data now suggests that children not only have extremely low risk, but also that they naturally have the capability of evading the SARS-CoV-2 virus due to the lack of the ACE2 receptors in their nostrils. Another study used by 20,000 20, parents reported issues caused by wearing the mask in 68% of the kids. These included irritability, 60%, headache, 53%, difficulty concentrating, 50%, less happiness, 49%, reluctance to go to school, 44%, malaise, 42%, impaired learning, 38%, and drowsiness or fatigue, 37%. Parents know what's best for their kids. If a parent wants to have their child wear a mask, they can. If a parent doesn't want to have their child in a mask, they should, they should have the same right. All we want as parents is to have our God-given right to choose what is best for our kids, not the government. Now a federal judge recently said that Iowa cannot ban mask mandates. Now I'm not a legal scholar, but if you can't ban something in school, then how can you legally enforce the same action? It should go both ways. In Florida, an appeals court just ruled that the mask ban can be reinstated, so now it's going to work its way up to the Supreme Court. Do we really want to enforce masks again for a week or two and then have it struck down? Keep having our kids go back and forth over and over again? I think the school board, school board should table this agenda until it works itself out in the court system. We have been in school for almost a month now with low infection rates, 0% death rates, and no mask mandates. Why are we changing things now? Johnston School Board, just across the road down there, just. <coughs> Thank you. On behalf of Sarah and Gray Larson, 6405 Roseland Drive, Urbandale, there needs to be a mask mandate in schools. Prime example, picking up my son from school, I heard a kid talk about how he just got tested for COVID. His friend asked him if he had it, and he said he didn't know because he had not gotten the results back yet. If he didn't know, then why was he at school? If he had it, then he potentially exposed at least dozens of other children. These kids are not vaccinated, and it is reckless sending them into schools without masks. With these children, masks are the one tool we do have to use to limit the spread. And yet, when I drop my son off at Olmstead, most students and staff are unmasked and not even kind of, di and not even kind of distanced. 
We are just asking for our children to bring this virus home to parents, siblings, grandparents, friends, and other family. Until we can get these children vaccinated, there needs to be mandate. And not having one is nothing less than reckless, dangerous, and neg negligent. If we care about our children, then we need to keep them safe, especially since cases amongst children have skyrocketed. I've been greatly disappointed at the lack of mitigation I've seen at Olmstead, the lack of transparency, and essentially acting as if COVID does not even exist. What about the children with underlying health conditions or their family members? Do they not deserve protection? Is it not fair to continue to ask the people trying to limit the spread to just stay home? We have lives, these children have lives, and we deserve to live them without fear of our loved ones dying. This is about public health, not personal choice. Issuing a mask mandate would be doing the right thing. I usually love the Urbanville School District and have been proud to have my son be a part of it, but this year I'm just disgusted with how little parents and staff seem to care about these kids. When my son is one of maybe two dozen total wearing a mask at school, when his own teachers aren't even wearing masks, that's an issue, an issue that needs to be resolved now while the opportunity is there. Thank you for your time. Good evening. Corey Nelson, 12340 Tanglewood Drive. Um, in 2019, my wife completed multiple marathons, Ironman competitions, and was in the best shape of her life. Then in July of 2020, she contracted COVID-19, more than likely from a patient who she was caring for. Over a year later, after having COVID, my wife still has migraines, a diminished sense of smell, and a heart murmur that she did not have previous to COVID-19. And she has not been able to enjoy her passion for running and endurance sports. The fact is, no one knows what the long-term effects of COVID-19 is. We can talk about the lack of death rates in kids all we want, but we don't know anything about the virus. But we do know that everyone, that when everyone wears a mask, the transmission rate of COVID-19 is diminished. I understand that masks can be uncomfortable and inconvenient for some, but I truly believe us adults have more of a problem with masks than our children. Many times I've come home from work to find my children still wearing their masks because we didn't even notice that they were still on. Masks are not a silver, bol silver bullet for COVID. No one claims that they are. But as a parent and a husband, I will do whatever I can to keep my family healthy. And I ask the school board to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Jennifer Benson, 12319 Tanglewood Drive, Urbandale. I kept my three elementary age children home from school all last year due to the pandemic. I was grateful to be able to have them return this year, but felt gut punched when I realized a mask requirement would not be in place due to Iowa state law. I implore Urbandale schools to reinstate the mask mandate now that it is permissible to do so. Two things we can all agree on are that we want this pandemic to end and that we want our children to be safe. A mask requirement serves both of those goals. Thank you. Сергей Лазович, на день Тверкин проспект Авеню. And the Governor Reynolds executive order everybody already has equal rights to decide on masks and no additional restrictions are necessary. We don't have state of emergency in Iowa, in the United States and elsewhere. Hospitals are empty. All those new cases, variants, scariants are only on TV false news. There is no pandemic. By procedure, pandemic can be declared only by General Assembly of WHO, and it never happened. Private opinion of Director General of WHO has no judicial power and based on assumptions. By definition, the situation can be called a pandemic only when 20 or more 
20% or more of population is sick. Epidemic, when 5% or more is sick, not tested positive, but sick, because it's acute respiratory disease. We never reach those thresholds. PCR tests were not invented for diagnostics and are not specific for definition of pathogens according to inventor, Kerry Mullis. It's proved that children, least of all ages categories, are endangered to get sick with COVID, and they overcome it easily with mild symptoms or without those. So respiratory disease is not dangerous for children. They can easily beat it with natural immunity. But harm from masking is much higher than disease you are trying to protect from. After one minute of breathing in the mask, oxygen level drops down to critical low and CO2 level gets up to dangerous high. After two hours, mask concentrates millions of pathogens from breathing, fungi, and mold start growing and getting into the lungs. Read inserts for the mask. They do not protect from viruses. So what is this for? After the World Economic Forum in Davos became public, the book of Klaus Schwab, COVID-19, Great Reset. It was given as a manual to each president and available as PDF on the web. Read it. Enslaving people under COVID-19 agenda and COVID passports is the main purpose of this building of the new world order. They published it. And the task number one for it is to destroy USA. Thank you. On behalf of Tony Bibbs, 4315 125th Street, Urbandale. Regarding elementary schools, given none of the students qualify to receive a vaccine, I believe masks should be mandatory immediately and remain in place until Metro County's infection data is back in check or until these kids qualify to receive the vaccine. My reasoning is obvious. These kids don't qualify for the vaccine, so masks are their best bet to avoid infection. Additionally, it helps prevent them from bringing the virus home to friends and loved ones. Regarding the middle school, I believe masks should be immediately mandatory for any student 11 years old or under and remain in place until Metro County infection data is back in check or until they qualify to receive the vaccine. I also believe if the number of infections in that school exceeds some predetermined criteria, masks must be mandatory for all students. My reasoning here is that this is a nice middle ground since most kids already qualify for the vaccine with the notable exception that with that those that are 11 and under and it leave the and it leaves the option for a mask requirement as a tool should infection spike for the high school i believe masks should not be mandatory since they all qualify for the vaccine but again i also believe if the number of infections in that school exceeds some predetermined criteria masks should be mandatory as for the predetermined criteria for requiring masks, I leave that up for a later debate. Obviously, this would need to be based in part on the total infections in that school, but I can envision multiple criteria for this, week over week, infection rates, et cetera. The goal with my line of thinking here is this doesn't make a mask requirement blindly for all schools in the district, rather customizing that decision based on the situation of each school. Honestly, I'd be totally fine with a mass mandate immediately until the metro numbers are back in check, but I also understand why some parents don't like the notion of a mass mandate. That said, I would like to say one thing to those who think my kid my choice. I don't support this belief. The reality is if I were to send my kids to school without masks and they turn out to be COVID positive, it could potentially be passed outside my family. I can't in good conscience let that happen because I truly value all our lives, not just those in my family. I'm sad we live in a climate compassion. I'm sad we live in a climate compassion and sacrifice for the greater good is such a hard concept to grasp. If we all would have masked up sooner and those who qualify for the vaccine taken it, we wouldn't even be having this meeting. Thank you.
My name is Scott Dykstra, uh, 12615 Ridgemont Drive. I'm going to be speaking on behalf of my wife, Pam, who unfortunately had to leave a little bit early tonight. Um, just a couple quick things. I don't really have her notes, but I will just say a few things. Uh, Dr. Daka and Catherine, I totally agree with your comments earlier uh, tonight. Um, I, I, I believe in civility, and I, and I am sickened by the division that has been um, created and displayed, um, not only in this community, but all over the country. Um, unfortunately, I think a lot of it has to do with, with some of our civil servants and, and kind of the division that's displayed. And I think that um, many of us feel, feel like we don't have much of a voice other than to be um, somewhat unruly. Um, I'm not, not condoning that at all. Um, I, I, I agree with many, many of the, the people that have spoke tonight. Um, Brian Kloss, um, I agree with him by saying, there, what's the hurry in moving to a mask mandate. Um, I don't agree with following along with the Des Moines Public School District. I think that is the wrong model to follow. I think that following some of our, our uh, more successful suburban schools um, is the right model, and they have, they have d demonstrated um, uh, some pause, um, uh, uh, some time to look at the, at the data. We do not have an outbreak in Urbadale. The data that we show on our, on our website is showing there's no spike in cases. We have very minimal cases, so there's no worry, there's no fear that should be uh, impacting our decisions immediately. So I just ask, you know, the board to, to, to just pause. I mean, let's, let's take, take a, a breath. Um, let's see what's, what happens. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe that the kids are the biggest, um, they're, they're the most at risk. I mean, we, we see that in all the CDC data. So again, I just ask for a pause tonight. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Kathleen Lowe, 4520 76th Street, Urbanville, our family of five has a common meeting point every day, the dinner table. Here we come together and share stories about our day at work or school. We talk about cross country, basketball, community events, video games, and our favorite sports teams. The dinner table is often our favorite part of the day because we smile, laugh, and enjoy each other. For months, our dinner table conversations have been like this until last night. Like an unwanted guest, COVID was back at our dinner table. We have two 10th graders, a 7th grader, and my husband also works in the schools. I am the only person in our family who does not spend their entire day at a UCSD building. Last night, I saw the dread on my family's faces. These are their collective viewpoints on how wearing face masks affects them and their environment at school. Point one, it affects the learning environment. Kids don't participate in the classroom when they are wearing face masks. Teachers ask questions, ask for volunteers, and no one raises their hand. Opinions aren't shared. Group discussions are limited and unproductive. Point two, voices are muffled when face masks are worn. This makes it difficult to hear the teacher Keywords and instructions are missed. Everyone is often asked to repeat themselves. Being asked to repeat yourself leads to not wanting to participate. Next point, students don't socialize with each other the same way when they are forced to wear face masks. Hallways are quiet. Kids don't talk to each other in the lunch line. There isn't the same amount of laughter and conversation in the lunchroom. It's more difficult to form friendships because masks hide facial expressions. Masks cause division amongst the students. When wearing face masks, the kids will talk about COVID. This is not a normal topic of conversation, but the face mask will cause COVID to be talked about when this happens. Students start expressing beliefs and politics, which creates a division that otherwise isn't as prevalent. A mask mandate would make this the third consecutive year that has, that has been impacted. They lost graduation from eighth grade and fifth grade. They lost field trips, they lost classroom parties, and they lost the first of being a freshman. They've lost enough. They can't get what they have lost back and they don't want to lose more. Our recommendation to the board is not to mandate masks and leave the choice to wear masks up to students and their families. Thank you for the opportunity to represent my family and for reading the communication. I'm here today to speak against mask wearing in school. The updated CDC guidelines recommend wearing a mask. That is a recommendation. 
There is no law that requires it. The decision to wear a mask or have my child wear a mask is my choice as a parent and my right as an American citizen. The word mandate is also a strong recommendation, but not a law. Let me repeat, these are recommendations and not laws. CDC official Ann Shushad has stepped down after emails surface, surfacing showing her colluding with a powerful teacher union to keep schools closed during the coronavirus pandemic. If you do not feel safe sending your child out without everyone wearing a mask, then you are effectively imprisoning them since they will not be able to go anywhere, to school, shopping, or the park. Masks do not work. There is a warning on the side of mask boxes. Quote, this ear loop mask will not provide any protection against COVID-19, coronavirus, or other viruses or contaminants. Wearing an ear loop mask does not reduce the risk of contracting any disease or infection, end quote. Wearing masks for six plus hours a day creates the perfect environment for bacteria to grow. Ask Mama Bear from Ankeny about her daughter. She got a staph infection on her face four different times. Other side effects from, of wearing masks include reduced, reduced oxygen intake, headaches, fatigue, inhaling unsafe levels, levels of carbon dioxide and impaired learning. Biologists have measured the COVID-19 virus to be between 49 to 80 nanometers in size. The mesh in most masks is equivalent to a mosquito flying through a chain link fence. The Dallas Center Grimes School District will continue to be mask optional and follow their current mitigation practices. The majority of kids at our schools are not even wearing masks. It will cost us $10,000 to provide masks at our schools. We, the majority, would like you to vote for option two to continue as is. Remember, you all work for us, not your own personal agendas. For those of you who vote for the mask mandate, we, the parents, are fed up and look forward to voting you off of the school board. On behalf of Matthew Froelich, 3813 79th Street, Urbandale, I am completely against the masks being mandatory. There is no peer-reviewed scientific data proving these masks stop viruses. However, we do know that these masks restrict breathing, can cause infection, cause dizziness when airflow is restricted, as well as psychological effects. It should be a parent's decision. If masks are going to be required, I fully expect Urbandale to offer students the option to do virtual learning. If my children are going to be made to wear a mask and no virtual learning is offered, I will be pulling my children out of your schools and will be looking into all legal options available to take against the Urbandale School District or the board. Please acknowledge that this email has been received and read, and I pray the right decision is made by the school board. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lisa Harderson. I live at 4210 92nd Court. I currently have one son at the high school and one son at the middle school. I'm also a graduate of Urbandale High School. As someone who grew up in Urbandale and who decided to raise my family here, I'm disappointed in the direction Urbandale Schools has gone. Last year, we made the difficult decision to transfer our daughter to Des Moines Christian in December because Urbandale was not offering in-person schooling. I have resisted, resisted speaking at these meetings. I don't want to be here. Just like I've heard some of you say, we all didn't want to be in this position. But I'm tired of sitting back and watching the school board push their own agendas, and I will fight for my two kids that are still at Urbandale. Urbandale's mission is teaching all, reaching all. In the past year and a half, I've watched many school board meetings, and here is what I've learned. This mission is not true. The only group of people that have been reached by Urbandale schools over the past year and a half without their rights taken away are, one, those who chose remote learning. This was never taken away, and it is still an option. And two, those who want their kids to wear masks. This also has never been taken away, and it's still an option. These two groups are being reached by Urbandale schools. For those of us who wanted five days of in-person learning last year, that was never going to happen at Urbandale without the state government stepping in. For those of us who wanted to unmask our children last year, that was never going to happen at Urbandale last year without the state government stepping in. This is not teaching all, reaching all. This is teaching and reaching those kids who think like the Urbandale School Board thinks. For the time being, the school board, you the school board, have the power back and we are seeing yet again 
how you are only reaching this one group of people who think like you think. I do not want my kids' faces covered during school. This should be a parent's choice. Also, I am tired of hearing what Des Moines schools are doing about this issue. I'm tired of taking the advice from the same paid epidemiologist that Des Moines schools is paying. No one moved to Urbandale and sent their kids to Urbandale schools hoping it would be like Des Moines schools. Stop trying to be like them and instead start listening to all the Urbandale parents and families that you represent and not just a select group. Let each parent decide what is best for their kid. Like Dina said at the meeting, the special board meeting last, a couple weeks ago, we should respect each family's personal decision about masks. I believed her when she said that, and I believed that Urbandale Schools was going to do that. Are you? The Urbandale COVID dashboard numbers are low, and that's great news. Don't be so quick to issue a mask mandate just because you can. Don't abuse the power you have as elected officials. Teaching all, reaching all. This means giving parents a choice on masking their own children. The school board and administration does not need to mandate this, not tonight, not ever. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Corey Klusner, 12507 Ridgemont Drive, Urbandale. Urbandale School Board, thank you for taking the time to read and hear me on this highly debated topic. I want to start by saying I am not anti-mask, but the side of this debate that I take would make me seem as such. I believe masks work for their purpose, and if you are not vaccinated or at high risk, I support a person's right to wear one. I also believe it should be the judgment of me as a parent to decide if my children fall in one of those categories or they do not. We are far enough along in this COVID era that my children know the importance of regularly washing their hands and using hand sanitizer. Also, if a mask will prevent someone from spreading what they have, then it will protect someone that chooses to wear a mask as the speed of transfer from the water molecules will have slowed significantly by the time it reaches their mask. Again, I am not anti-mask. I am pro-choice on the subject. Much has been said about how mandating masks will keep children in school, but not of the distractions of wearing masks can affect the learning process and what is being done to help spot when added distractions are causing learning failures. There are failures, whether it is the student that just learns at a slower pace or a student with ADD who now has one more distraction to add to what they must already manage. We seem to be rushing to make new decisions that do not require rushing before we have a plan. My last point is based on the code of ethics you all signed on to uphold. We will be motivated only by an earnest desire to serve the school district as a whole and our community students in the best possible way. The current method of choice would serve the district as a whole as it allows all students to attend in school based on their chosen method of mask adherence. If you mandate, you are not serving all students. If you stay the course of choice, you are. We'll remain open-minded and objectively listen to facts presented at the board table prior to, prior to voting. As you do let people speak, I question it has been with an open mind by all board members. When I see a posting on TikTok by a board member stating she can mandate masks now, I do not feel she will now listen with an open mind and would question if she would be able to vote on such a mandate for this reason. Thank you for your time. Hi, um, my name is Lyubov Pazovich. Um, I live on 1913 Prospect Avenue with Des Moines. Can you pull your mic down? I'm sorry, we can mic barely okay. hear you. Thank you. Oh, my name is Lyubov Pazovich. I live uh, on 1913 Prospect Avenue with Des Moines. Um, I am mother of three children and I am currently working in the hospital. When I hear about case searches, always wondering, where did it happen? Uh, this morning, my youngest daughter, after receiving message about possible mask mandates, uh, said, Mom, it's so sad. Seems like people do not know anymore what science is. Let's talk about science. Science tells us that wearing masks for several hours give people headaches, fatigue, mouth disease, skin breakdowns, and can lead to the lung cancer. By several hours, mean about four hours per day. How many hours our children worn wear masks last school year? Right, approximately eight hours. CDC on researches 
of masking 19,000 students from 169 schools in Georgia show no significant statistics than benefits kids when they are wearing masks. In Iowa, we have a law that masks are optional. Let's keep this. No mask mandates. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Adam Halford, 4313 74th Street, Urbandale. I believe that as a parent, I should have the ability to choose if my children wear a mask or not. I choose not to have my children wear a mask for the following reasons. Number one, health risk for kids not wearing masks is extremely low. Children are more likely to die in a car accident on the way to school than to face life-threatening illness from not wearing a mask. Number two, wearing a mask is a constant reminder to be afraid. Last year, my son was so afraid to take his ma mask off because the virus would get him. This is irrational, and I will not subject my kids to this fear reminder again. Number three, mask wearing inhibits social development and communication. At early ages, children are learning empathy and expressions, and masks remove important facial cues from the equation. Number four, masks are not snot rags and jewel claws. Number five, children take masks off to eat, pointing out a hole on the efficacy. I believe with the knowledge we have now, going back to a mask mandate would not be received well. As a parent, I would conscientiously object. It is not the right thing to do. It is an overstep, respectfully. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Chris Homer. I live at uh, 9531 Hammond Tree Drive in Irmandale. I have uh, three students, one in high school, 10th grade, uh, two at uh, Valerius Elementary, 4th and 5th grade. I'm here tonight to give them a voice. Uh, but I'm also here to speak the truth because uh, it seems to have been lost in the, in the last few years. Um, you know, Stacy has her truth, Judy has her truth. Uh, Dr. Daka has, has her truth, but there is only one truth. And we can spin it to the left, we can spin it to the right, um, but when you spin it, you always spin away from the truth. The truth is that masks don't work. They don't work to stop the spread of, of COVID-19. There have been studies done by Oxford educated uh, PhDs um, and, and other research that's been done by the International Research Journal of, of Public Health that states that masks don't work. Uh, I encourage you all to go out and, and read that. But I also encourage you, as, as several other people have stated tonight, uh, that you work for us, uh, the people in this audience and the people in this community. And I hope you hear us, because we are telling you at five or six to one now that we don't, want, uh, we don't want masks on our kids. I was gonna share more about these studies and more about uh, history and those kind of things, but being limited in time and seeing the attitudes in most of your faces, I can see that it's just not going to be uh, anything that, uh, that will change your minds. If you choose to enact this, then I would ask that you also give up the money that follows my student to your school so that I can take him and take them and enroll them at Des Moines Christian or another school that, uh, that will not mask our children. As Des Moines Christian did not, did not uh, have a mask mandate at all last year. And they never, never closed down. They never had, had high spread. And that is what I would want for, for my children. If you, if you do not, we will remember this at the ballot box in, in the next school election, and we will be coming for your, for your seats. I hope you hear this. Uh, I've heard that, I've heard many times that one death is too many, but we all die at some point, whether we die of COVID, whether we die of a car accident, whether we die, none of us get out of this life alive. So why are we worried so much 
about, about 0.001% of people dying. Thank you. On behalf of Becky Atchison, 4320 75th Street in Urbandale, my name is Becky Atchison and my husband and I have three children in the school district, one in middle school and two in Olmsted Elementary. I have a variety of friends in different circles of the community of Urbandale, so when I am writing this, know that I have the opinion of the majority of people within all my circles. If you take the option away from the parents to mass their children, then what is next? I do not feel it is the board's decision to make on what is best for my children. You see, last year we encountered many difficulties with being forced to wear masks. My son has health and anxiety reasons why he cannot wear a mask because he was not able to wear a mask. He was then separated from his class in several instances so his germs would not get on other children and was told to sit away from the other kids which affected him emotionally and in his learning. If Urbandale truly cares for all and then, and then how is this helping my son by segregating him from everyone? It should be our choice to mask or unmask him. My daughter and several of her friends came home with headaches daily from wearing masks it should be our choice to mask or unmask them. I know of a teacher in the district who was forced to wear one and has claustrophobia, anxiety, and it caused her to have an ER visit last year. It should be their choice to mask or unmask. I am parenting my child and making decisions for them, not you. That is why I'm making my voice heard. You seem to, to only be hearing the one side that wants masks forced on our children to why they should be wearing them, but yet there is the same amount of children and even teachers who cannot or should not wear them. Please let us decide. My suggestion would be to open a poll for parents like you did for our in-school versus hybrid poll you did last year and really hear the community's voice on this issue instead of relying on the board to make the decision, which obviously still isn't letting the parents choose for themselves, but you at least would be hearing the opinion from more of the community. Lastly, I would like to bring to your attention a video that was posted yesterday from one of your board members, Stacy Anderson. She posted a video on TikTok, which is a popular social media outlet and praised herself for the federal judge ruling in her favor to remove the governor's no mask mandate law. She then began to cheer for herself using inappropriate language. This is unacceptable by anyone, let alone someone who is representing our children, our teachers, and this community. I would ask for an immediate removal of her position on the board. Thank you for your time. On behalf of Lindsay Shaw, 9504 Aurora Avenue, Urbandale, I just wanted to take the time to voice our family's viewpoint. We are new to the Urbandale School District and have had a great experience thus far. That is nothing short of the fact that our son is able to attend school without wearing a mask and make true in-person interactions with his friends and teachers, something that we as a family find fundamental to his learning and social development. We are happy with the current mask policy and totally support parents being able to choose what is best for their children rather than being mandated by our school district. We want to thank you for all the hard work that your school staff provides our child and look forward to school remaining the same as it seems to be working with the current policy. On behalf of Michael Madron, 3416 Maryland Drive, Urbandale, I sincerely hope and strongly urge that the Urbandale Community School District keeps mask usage optional and not mandated. My five-year-old son is in kindergarten. His age group has almost zero risk from COVID, so there's no reason to require masks. There are numerous studies showing mask usage is not effective at preventing virus transmission, so again, there's no reason to require masks. Wearing a dirty, restrictive mask all day long is not something anyone, especially children, should be forced to endure. Rebreathing carbon dioxide is certainly not healthy. Children rely on facial expressions for cues. Masks interfere with the learning process by concealing a teacher's mouth. Masks can also make a person's spoken words harder to hear and understand. If your intention is teaching, then in addition to being superfluous and dehumanizing, masking is counterproductive to your primary purpose. Again, I urge that mask usage be kept optional. Parents should be able to make their own choice regarding this issue. If mask usage is mandated, I will withdraw my son from your facilities and he will be homeschooled. On behalf of Michael Schmidt, 3502 74th Street, Urbandale. To the Urbandale Community School Dress District Board of Directors, thank you for your consideration of comments through written medium. My name is Mike Schmidt and I want to commend, comment on your consideration of a mask mandate. Only time will tell if our current understanding of this novel virus is accurate or if we have more to learn. That truth leaves you in the difficult situation of making decisions with the knowledge at hand as we continue to learn about this virus and variants. As such, I do not wish to get into the science of the matter. I offer these comments for consideration. There are no easy decisions. Whatever the decision tonight, some families, families will be joyous and others upset. Listen to yourself. There are no solutions that are 100%. Masks do not stop all cases from spreading. It slows it down. We may not have a history with this novel coronavirus, but there was a substantial drop in influenza cases with the use of masks. 
Those results speak volumes. If you issue a mask mandate, there will be no way of knowing whether it was an overreaction. It will be difficult to prove one way or the other. However, if you do not issue a mandate and the other mitigation strategies are not enough, it is only a matter of time before students from Urbandale Community Schools need hospitalization. Some accurately point out that the mortality rate is rather low, but little is said of the crippling medical debt that is, this virus is leaving in its wake. That could substantially change the future for students and families. The work of this board of directors is upholding the district mission, teaching all, reaching all, and vision to bring learning to life for everyone. The mask mandate may, not, may be seen as an inconvenience or burdensome, but the potential damage to the future of others is a gamble at best. I am in favor of a mask mandate because I believe the mission of teaching all, reaching all, begins with providing a safe environment for learning. Thank you for your time. On behalf of Penny Coleman, 4313 75th Street, Urbandale, our children and grandchildren do not have a voice in this matter. What a simple thing to do to protect these precious little ones. The kids just look at the masks as another rule. They will comply with no thought. Remember, it could be your child, grandchild, who might pick up this horrible virus through a simple cough or sneeze. How would you feel if it could have been prevented with the wearing of a mask? On behalf of Dan Pearson, 12308 Tanglewood Drive, Urbandale, I am reaching out to request the school board and superintendent require the wearing of masks for all students, staff, and visitors at Urbandale Community School District. Our district mission is teaching all, reaching all. Our district vision is to bring learning to life for everyone. Requiring masks helps bring the district closer to achieving these. We've heard the argument several times before. If you want your child to wear a mask, you're free to make that decision. We'll also hear similar arguments like, I should be able to make decisions about my child's safety. To have this discussion, it needs to be acknowledged how masks provide protection. Surgeons do not wear a mask to protect themselves from the patient. They wear them to protect the patient. This is the same con concept with wearing masks in school. The mask my child wears provides more protection for those around him than it does for himself. My decision is affecting the safety of your child and vice versa. As a parent of an asthmatic child who is too young to be vaccinated, we feel our hands are tied. He's had as close to a normal childhood as anyone could wish for, but his asthma has resulted in more ER visits and ambulance rides than any parent would want. At the start of the school year, we had two choices. One, send him to school with a mask and hope enough parents would do the same. The reward is he would be back with friends and get structured learning that only a classroom can provide. The risk would be he'd end up being one of few wearing a mask and his chance of exposure would be tremendous. Two, we enroll him in remote learning which removes him from his friends and the learning environment that suits him best but have the best chances to avoid another trip to the ER or worse. We literally had no good option. With the lack of any real mitigation measures in place, we had to go with option two. While our son is keeping up with his online learning, there has not been a week that has gone by without my son in tears because he'd rather be with his friends. Countless, time he's, countless times he's asked, why won't other people wear masks? Why did they ban them? And why won't people help kids like me? All I can say to him is I don't know. It is unfair for parents of at-risk children to only, to only have lose-lose options when the alternative is to require masks and reduce the risk for everyone. Students under 12 can't be vaccinated, and before Monday, schools couldn't require masks. We are only four weeks into the school year, and it's become clear that the current mitigation efforts are not working. According to the state's, state of Iowa's COVID-19 tracker, the 0 to 17 age group is the largest contributor to positive cases in the last seven days. 29% of Iowa's positive tests over the last week have come from this age group. Urbandale's numbers are good for now, but let's do what we can to keep it that way. What I'm asking for is the board to commit to our district mission and vision. I ask the board to follow the recommendations of the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics, which both recommend wearing masks. Please let your decision be guided by information rather than intimidation. The decision to require masks may be unpopular with some, but it is ultimately the right one for the safety of our students and staff. I appreciate your time and consideration. On behalf of Nicole Schwegler, 5715 Chatham Street, Johnson, Iowa. Dear school board and administration, my name is Nicole and I am a parent at Urbandale Community School District. I live at that address. I have three children in the district, one student in eighth grade at Urbandale Middle School and two students at Rolling Green Elementary. Currently there are six known cases of COVID-19 at the middle school and six cases at Rolling Green. I'm writing to you today as a concerned parent that is scared for her children. My youngest child is seven years and has a heart condition and severe asthma. We are looking at a potential second heart surgery yet this year. We've been told by his cardiologist and pulmonologist that it is vital that he not contract the COVID virus as it could be life-threatening for a child with his health conditions. At the beginning of the pandemic, we were thankful that the district closed. We appreciate that you waited to bring everyone back until more information was available. Last year's home option was a saving grace for our family. I was able to keep my children safe and still get them a wonderful education. However, this year, the online option is not viable. There is no teacher available and no Zoom class to help students stay on task. It is unreasonable to expect a seven-year-old to self-teach via worksheets and emailing in questions. 
I had no choice but to send our children back to school in person to receive an appropriate education. And currently only about 15% of students are wearing a mask in school and that puts my children at risk. The doctors and scientists have proven again and again that if everyone wears a mask, it keeps people safe. I don't think anyone wants to send their children to school and them end up in the hospital or dying because of this devastating virus. I do understand that not everyone has a high-risk child, but I can say with some certainty that no parent wants to see their child end up in a hospital fighting to breathe. Some general thoughts to leave you with. There are rules in place in every society to help keep everyone safe. These rules do not take your freedom away. They are there to help promote safety. These rules are made to help the public work and play safely to play together safely. By enacting a rule to wear a mask, you two are helping our society to stay safe and treat each other with respect. Please put a mandate in, mask mandate in place for our schools, all children, and all faculty. Help us keep our children safe, take the politics out of our schools, and put the kids' needs first. Thank you. On behalf of Joe Badinger, 3908 Patricia Drive, pending explicit directives or mandates from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, I do not support any implementation of a localized mask mandate or requirement for UCSD staff, students, or visitors. Nothing in the current policies and procedures prohibits anyone from choosing to wear a mask or other face covering if they choose to do so for personal health or other reasons. The current data provided on UCSD's COVID-19 status dashboard does not indicate an extreme outbreak or excessive numbers of infected students. As of 914, only the high school indicates more than five cases, and they only report eight cases out of 1,300 students. If the current policies are in, ineffective, I would expect to see an infection rate significantly higher than six-tenths of 1% of students. Unless the infection rate, rates change dramatically or the CDC provides explicit direction otherwise, please continue to allow students and staff to make their own medical decisions. Nothing is prohibiting anyone from wearing a mask if they deem it personally or medically necessary. On behalf of Doug Miller, 3323 Valdez Drive, Des Moines, I'm the parent of a nine-year-old in fourth grade and six-year-old in first grade. They are so happy to be back learning in person this year and after learning remotely all of last year. They need to be in person for their mental health and academic growth, but even more so they need to be safe. It is scientifically proven that outside of the vaccine, masks are our best defense against this deadly virus. Given that schools are full of children not able to be vaccinated, it's imperative that we take every step possible to keep everyone, students, teachers, and everyone they go home to as safe as possible and institute a mask mandate as soon as possible. It does not matter how low the odds are of a child getting seriously sick or the survival rate if they do get sick. Any unnecessary risk of a life, especially a child's life, is unforgivable. Do not let political opinions get in the way of making the best decision for everyone's safety. Please help me protect my children when I can't. Institute a mask mandate in schools today and maybe save a life tomorrow. Thank you. On behalf of Eric and Jessica Moen of 4412 95th Street in Urbandale, I'm writing to let you know that I feel making kids wear masks is a family choice. Please listen to these parents that know what is best for their, their kids. I'm shocked and saddened by the videos that are surfacing on social media from one of our school board members. I thought they were there to represent Urbandale in a professional manner. I feel like this is not the case. Thanks for your time. On behalf of Amber Gray, 9903 Hammond Tree Drive, Urbandale. Superintendent Dacca and members of the Urbandale School Board, masking should not be required in schools. It should be a personal parental decision for each individual. If, parenting are want, if parents are wanting their children to mask up or if staff are wanting to wear masks, they are more than welcome to do so. Students are not wearing spe specially fitted N95 masks that block the virus transmission. They're wearing cloth masks. It is not proven that cloth masks really stop the transmission of COVID. Last year, kids were masked all but two weeks of the school year and there were still positive cases in our schools. According to the COVID-19 status dashboard, there are eight positive cases in Urbandale High School. Using estimates of how many students and staff are in UHS, this is approximately 0.6%, maybe less. In Urbandale Middle School, there are one to five cases indicated on the dashboard. If there truly are five cases, this percentage is still only approximately 0.05%. If there are only one to four cases, the percentage is even lower, possibly only 0.1%. I have two students in Urbandale schools. They persevered through the 2021 school year with hybrid model and masking. Teachers and new friends didn't even know what they looked like without a mask. It was easy to hide and become anonymous, easier to not engage in educational discussions or socializing conversations. The school age years bring so much growth and development to our children in so many ways. We are doing our students a disservice if we are requiring masks in schools. Comparing last year with masking to this one without masking, I can see the difference in my children. Masking is detrimental to our kids. On behalf of Lindsey Frampton, 9314 Sharon Circle, Urbandale. To the board members of the Urbandale Community School District, first, I want to thank the school board for hearing from members of the community when many other local districts chose not to do so. I am a learning and development consultant and I'd like to tell you why reinstating the mask mandate will have a negative impact on the learning experience. 
My job allows me to analyze the educational needs of various organizations and then work with them to create an environment that allows effective learning and development to take place. The number one barrier to effective learning is communication, and experts agree that 70 to 93% of effective communication happens non-verbally. Children rely on facial expressions and tone of voice to regulate their response towards people and situations. This is called social referencing, and it cannot happen when our faces are covered. When I communicate with my daughter, she pays close attention to my mouth movement and facial expressions so she can better understand what I am saying. When we cannot see the speaker's lips, it is difficult to infer what word or letter they are saying. This is not something that applies solely to young children who are learning to read and comprehend. Dyslexia represents 20% of the population and 80 to 90% of all those with learning disabilities. Uh, from Dyslexia FAQ in 2017. Not being able to see mouth movement can pose a serious burden to any child who is learning to read, has a learning disability, or is hearing impaired. In addition to working in learning and development, I am also a concerned parent who would, all, who would like, along with every other parent, to maintain the right to make decisions and, and with and for my children. We can acknowledge that any death or severe illness of a child is tragic while simultaneously acknowledging that the chances of death or severe Ill illness in children due to COVID is extremely rare. According to the CDC, as of September 8, 2021, the percentage of children who have died from COVID is 0 .00075. If your objective is to provide a reasonable accommodation for the minority, it should not be to the detriment of the majority. For children who are high risk, there is no science to show that a mask will protect them. The CDC lists 17 different studies, and its K-12 guidance is evidence that masks on students are effective, and not one study looked at student mask use in isolation from other mitigation efforts or against a control group. As a result, all 17 of these studies are flawed. There is no way to connect mask wearing directly and absolutely to decreased transmissions. Zweig of 2021. I would also like to add that the current health and illness policy allows for children with runny noses, coughs, and allergies to attend school. Putting a mask over the nose and mouth of a child with, the, with these symptoms cannot possibly be sanitary. I know that not every family is fortunate as me to have healthy kids. If I had a child who is at higher risk of illness or death from COVID or a close family member living in my home who is in that same high risk group, I can say with certainty that I would not be relying on masks to keep them safe. If my child was high risk, they would not be in a classroom full of children, masked or unmasked, until there was scientific evidence of something that would guarantee their health and safety. Thank you for consideration in this matter. On behalf of Vanessa Hageman, 6801 Meredith Drive, Urbandale, consider this. You have hearing loss and rely, rely on hearing aids and lips to read, hear, and communicate. That's my child's reality. This past year, the gaps in communication have been profound as a result of muffled speech due to masks and minimal, if any, follow-up in writing, ter terrifically impacting his overall learning and his high school educational experience. You have heard of the health issues for requiring masks, but there is an equally impacted group on the other side of things, too. For this, I ask that you consider no mandate. That said, seeing the direction some school boards are leaning, I doubt you will consider the hearing impaired and will move to mandate masks for all. My ask for the board is, is if you require masks, then mandate all educational expectations and assignments be documented in writing and sent through email. Ensure a comprehensive learning environment accompanied with a detailed syllabus for parents to better aid from home and by providing additional one-on-one -on -one time with teachers before school. Mandate a more nuanced learning considered those, considering those that are negatively impacted by the mass. We have to get away from a siloed approach and be mindful of all impacted by a, ma a mandate. On behalf of Joseph Ashley, 3203 88th Street, Urbandale. Every parent should have the right to make decisions for their child at the moment they do. Members of this board in our community seek to take those rights away. If you want your child to wear masks, they're welcome to. If you don't want your child to wear a mask, that is your right. We have at home and hybrid options for children whose parents are afraid and that their child will get sick. I have two children, one of whom is behind in speech and another who is autistic. They have already suffered academically due to the rulings and decisions made by this board over the past year. What is being proposed has nothing to do with helping or providing equal opportunity to education. This is about pushing an agenda. You are creating an atmosphere of fear in our children that will cause long-lasting damage. To my knowledge, we have had no issues with COVID causing disproportionate health impacts in any of our schools. You cannot stop all sickness, and children should not be afraid to live their lives. Your child will get sick with COVID and many other diseases. Their body will learn to fight them and be much better off for it. It is very problematic to me to see members of our community celebrating being able to force their perspectives on others. One board member even celebrated by posting a video on TikTok in which she refers to herself as a bad B. This is not only uncouth, but also inappropriate. It is very apparent which way this board will vote. I doubt anything said at this meeting or any other will have an, an effect. I have heard some say that their child wants a mask mandate. This is because you have driven fear into them. My child cried when I told her it was a possibility. Let, be, let children be children and let parents make decisions on their behalf. On behalf of Jennifer Perry, 10505 Hickory Drive, Urbandale, 
I am writing to support the proposal for masking before the board tonight. In reviewing the recommendation, it appears we have used science and expert opinion to make the decision as well as considering the changing legal landscape. This is not and should not be a political topic, but rather a matter of public health and safety. Thank you for doing what is needed to keep our kids safely in school. On behalf of Amy Ward, 7208 Townsend Avenue, Urbandale. My name is Amy Ward. I live at, I've already said it, my daughter attends Olmsted Elementary and has an autoimmune disease. I'm concerned that the loudest voices might drown out the voices of concerned parents. Under ki until kids under 12 can be vaccinated, the board has a responsibility to protect them by requiring all children and unvaccinated adults wear masks. Thank you for your time. On behalf of Jessica Carley, 3204 88th Street, Urbandale, please follow the recommendations of the medical community. We know that masks help prevent the spread of COVID-19. We know that transmission and hospitalizations are up in Polk County, and we know that elementary children are not yet able to be vaccinated. Mandating masks for the safety of everyone is the right thing to do. We will not end this pandemic without caring about the people around us. On behalf of Sarah Carujo, 3845 92nd Drive, Urbandale, I'm writing you as a concerned parent in regards to the recent special board, school board meeting about requiring masks in our Urbandale schools. I support masks being a family decision. Please do not mandate them. I ask you to keep our district's mask policy the same as Waukee and Grimes have and give parents a choice to make decisions for their children in regards to masks in school. Parents should be the ones making important medical decisions about their children. What if in some alternative universe it was mandated that children cannot wear masks to school? I am sure having that decision taken from you would be very troubling. I really believe that parents in Urbandale will make the best decision for their children. In addition, several TikTok videos have recently been shared from an Urbandale school board member, a person with authority to make important decisions about the education and health of my child. These videos were alarming, mostly because it appears she is boasting about her authority being a school board member. Is this even allowed? Why are these important people making TikToks over very sensitive issues that are obviously affecting a lot of people? It seems really weird and it doesn't feel right. I hope that you will consider taking actions against this and prevent Ms. Anderson from voting on this issue this evening as it is a conflict of interest according to the Urbandale Code of Ethics. I love Urbandale schools and I pray in the future that we can have a solid foundation of school board members that represents the parents as a whole. I hope we can all find common ground and get along that is truly what is best for our kids. Thanks for your time to listen to me today and thanks for your work in our district. On behalf of Jen Hansen, 4007 141st Street, Urbandale, parents, staff, and students have shared, com commented, and signed a no mask mandate petition to let parents and not the school board choose what's best for their children in the Urbandale Community School District. Thank you. On behalf of Michelle Mackey, 12990 Pineview Drive, Clive, UCSD board, please know that our family will support whatever decision you make regarding mass usage. Just as we do with decisions that are made by our district as they relate to snow and inclement weather days, the first and last days of school, the time of the day that the school starts and the time of the day school ends. Protocol in the event of a fire or other emergency, along with countless other decisions made daily and throughout the school year. We do hope that your decision is made with the best interest of all students, teachers, and staff, not just in the best interest of a single student, teacher, or staff member, nor on whoever offers the loudest opinion. Everyone in our community, and for that matter, the global community, is beyond ready for the pandemic to end. However, it is not behind us yet. There are many in our community who have not been vaccinated or are not eligible to be vaccinated, and the research and medical guidance on mask usage is very clear. Masks decrease the transmission of the virus, so this comes down to does the UCSD uh, school district want to do what it can to decrease the transmission of this highly contagious and unpredictable disease or not? On behalf of Tony Eulen Hake, 4417 75th Street, Urbandale, I'm a parent of two children in UCSD. One attends eighth grade in the middle school and the other is in second grade and would be at Olmstead, but instead is participating in online learning due to the mask ban. My daughter, the eighth grader, wears a mask every day. She is one of a handful that I have seen wearing a mask. She knows the consequence her brother could face if she didn't and were to catch COVID in school and bring it home. Unfortunately, she seems to be one of the few that has the mindset that her actions protect the vulnerable. My son is seven and he'll be eight in December. He hasn't been inside a classroom since March of last year. He was born with a congenital heart defect and has six, had six open heart surgeries and procedures that put him at higher risk of coming down with a severe case of COVID and the long-term effects fr from it. He'll be one of the first in line to get vaccinated when it's available to him. But because there are no mask mandates and because so few seem to think about kids like him when sending their kids to school maskless, he is unable to attend in-person classes. We didn't send him last year out of fear even though there was a mandate. But after discussions with his pediatrician and cardiologist and knowing that the benefits of be being in-person for school are great, we felt more comfortable sending him this year had there been a mandate even though he was ineligible to be vaccinated at this point. Now that the ban has been overturned, I worry that his personal choice in politics 
will be the decision maker in whether masks will be required or not, as that is how it has played out everywhere else in Iowa. My son is being discriminated against. There's no other way to put it. Because of his health issues and no mask mandates, he's unable to attend in-person school. And yes, I realize he could wear a mask, but we know that masks work best when both parties are wearing them. And elementary age kids are much less likely to wear them the way they should and wash their hands as they should than, say, a middle school, high school student, or adult, which is all the more reason to require them in school buildings. These kids aren't vaccinated, and regardless of personal choice and the vaccine, the kids don't have an option. People have decided that they themselves are more important than the well-being of others. That is simply as easy as keeping him home, but it's not. My husband and I work full time. My job suffers because of the joke that is ingenuity for a working parent. I'm grateful for the option, believe me, but it's not very feasible for a working parent. We have been the family that limits our outings and exposures to our social circle because we don't want to spread COVID and my son suffers from it. Please put a mask requirement in place. I can believe that a piece of cloth, I can't believe that a piece of cloth is such an issue. There's literally no credible research that says that masks hinder a child's learning. This is all about politics. Perhaps us that are trying to keep our kids safe and let them have some normalcy while doing so are too quiet and need to protest and picket like the other side, but this is simple. Be a good human and care about others. I can't believe this is even up for debate, honestly. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. So thank you to everyone who commented. Um, particularly appreciative of uh, people who uh, um, managed to be civil and treat others the way they'd like to be treated. Um, at this point, um, we will move into the uh, action item. So the, um, do you want to talk? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so please, go ahead. So before we start, um, the conversation at the board table, I just want to make sure that people understand the premise of the lawsuit that was filed. This was not a lawsuit that was filed based on choice. Now I'm giving just information at this point so that everyone has the same information. The ACLU filed this lawsuit on behalf of a number of parents, I believe it was 11 um, different districts that they filed this suit on behalf of. The suit was filed because there are special education and medically fragile students who do not have, who is alleged to not have an equal opportunity for an education in the public school due to the fact that they are not protected by having a mask mandate. ACLU was successful in convincing the judge with whatever evidence was presented that there was a possibility that this was the case. The temporary restraining order was issued in that situation. Those are not issued typically just for the heck of it, those are issued because there is a substantial chance that they are going to win the lawsuit. This is not a final done deal, this is a temporary restraining order, there's additional paperwork that needs to be filed, the action can be appealed and that will go to the courts as well while the case continues to move through the ACLU. So it's important to understand that we, they also talked about the one student's rights don't end where another student's start. So the example that was given um, and one of the explanations from the attorneys was that a service dog, for example, if a student in a class needs a service dog and there's another student in that class that's deathly allergic to dogs, both of those students' rights have to be considered. And that's up to the school to make sure that they consider those rights and make accommodations where necessary. The Section 504 on the ADA, there are, are limits in there, there are rights, there are rules, there are things that have to be followed. This is not like choosing a, 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 a curtain color or something that's just simply a choice. There are rights that have to be considered on both sides. So both of the, of the situations that were described are accurate. One section, one student's rights do not end where another student starts. So I just want to make sure that people understand that this is not simply about choice. This is about making sure that every student has an equal opportunity to a public education that's free and appropriate. So I'll set that tone and then I will turn it over to um, the board. So before we actually bring this action item forward, do we have any any questions or clarifications as we the normal process that we would have for an action item? Um, I have a question. I would like to know why we can't um, folks that wish to go on to ingenuity cannot do so. 
I can't find any. God damn, sorry, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm curious as to why those who would like to go on to Ingenuity, the online option, are not allowed to. Are you, can I repeat your question? Yes. Are you asking why students that might now want to go on Ingenuity cannot go on Ingenuity? Yes. It's got to do with the sequencing of the courses, just the same as if a student wanted to leave Ingenuity and come back to the school and then decided they wanted to go back to Ingenuity. It's because of the sequence of the curriculum and the course that would not, they would have to start completely over. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, can you hear me now? Great. So my question is, it looked um, as if there were two options considered. Um, and when I'm looking at the, da the data that's presented to us, um, I'm kind of curious as to why we didn't look at other options and why are we making a universal um, decision as opposed to thinking about it more uh, targeted or building by building or looking at our children that are unvaccinated and, and possibly thinking about it in those ways. And also, I've heard many people tonight talk about the fact that what are our metrics then? Like, where do we, where do we make decisions? Where does it start? Where does it end? Um, and, and our kids need to know that as well. Um, it's very difficult, I think, for our children not to know their expectations. So if we at least get them, um, kind of an end game or, or this is what we're going to look for or this is what we're going to do, then it also at least helps them understand the purpose of it. So I guess that's my question as far as looking at the um, recommendation um, as to why maybe there wasn't options considered or what, why we haven't gotten more information, like has the staff been surveyed, have students been surveyed, um, have all of the families been surveyed. I mean, we've heard from families that have emailed us and families that have been here tonight. Um, it's pretty even, I mean, as far as what people want and what people don't want based on information that we've even received via emails. So I, I'm just curious as to maybe why we haven't looked at lots of options or is it one of those things that, you know, uh, it happened Monday and now we're here and so, you know, let's, let's propose this particular option without maybe really thinking more in depth with all choices we might have. So I can tell you that when this conversation started, I believe I had five options that um, my team and I discussed. I also had this discussion with all of the building administrators and the district administration staff at the administrative office. Um, some of those examples that didn't end up in this document were a pre-K to five, a pre-K to eight. When you look at the information, both in the lawsuit and across the medical um, references that we have, the consideration if you were to stop it at pre-K five, you would be missing those sixth graders who are not um, eligible to be vaccinated. If you were to stop it at pre-K eight, which was my first um, real instinct because that's consistent with our no visitor policy on the students that are eligible to be vaccinated. The consideration that has to be made is those students, somebody mentioned tonight, they have siblings at other buildings. So if we were to say go pre-K eight and then you have some high school students that are out without masks, without any, any other kind of mitigation, they're more likely to be exposed, possibly not get sick, but to be able to carry it back to their siblings that are at home. So that was putting families in a position where they would have to pull, if, if that was their decision, to pull a high school kid, for example, because that was not consistent with their um, protection. As far as polling um, families, that was mentioned, I think I had four people that requested that I do a poll, but again, this is not about a simple choice. This is about what is protecting the kids more so with the vulnerability and the medically fragile kids. So a poll I didn't feel was appropriate in that case, and certainly the board can um, reconsider any one of those suggestions. They can introduce their own suggestion. If you would like to do a survey, I 
I mean, I'm, I'm working for the board. I would, I would be doing what you would ask me to do, but I hesitate to do something that I wouldn't um, use the data for in a way that it would be meant to, and that would be a disservice to the people who took the time to take the poll. Dr. Daka, can you clarify, um, currently we're not named in the, the suit, correct? Mm -hmm. But do we run the risk if, if we do not protect um, our medically fragile students of being added to that suit? Yes, currently we are not named in the lawsuit. Um, I prefer not to wait to be sued to serve our medically fragile kids and our other kids. Um, there is, a, if you look in the assembly, there is a consideration for a medical exemption, again, because we have families that are um, not in favor of a mask requirement that also have medical conditions with their children, and there would be an option for that to happen. So, again, I'm trying to make sure that we're protecting all of our students and not wait till we are brought into a party of a lawsuit. I know that's a um, task that our coordinator of special education has already started to delve into to identify those students and try to figure out what additional accommodations we need to offer that would provide them better access. We had um, one family that was able to find additional accommodations through that work that they are able to be better protected. So those options can exist that's on an individual basis because every child has a different need. So, Thank you. Thanks, sir. Uh, I guess adding on to uh, Bree's um, discussion on data and not saying that it should necessarily be determinative, but I guess I'm curious uh, what feedback uh, the administration sought, sought from the teachers and staff. And we, we've had a lot of comments on, you know, teachers have not been masked or fully masked and, and kind of, you know, hearsay reports on what's there. And I guess I, I'm curious as to what feedback has been sought from from teachers and staff currently working in the schools. I missed part, um, is your question, how, how, much, how did we survey the staff? Have you surveyed the feedback? staff? What feedback have you sought from the staff in, in determining uh, this recommendation from the administration? I didn't specifically survey the, the staff individually at the schools. That was mostly anecdotal that came from the principals, but just as the students would have an option if there was a medical reason for them not to wear a mask, if there were teachers that had medical reasons, similarly, they would, we would work with them as well. Another question that came up was about students that are in speech therapy or students that have some type of auditory um, issue. There are masks that are appropriate for that. There are other accommodations that can be used. We've, we've used them in my previous district so that any student that's in speech therapy, any student that has another need for a different type of mask, there are things that we can do. Um, but no, I did not survey individually the staff at the buildings. And does this recommendation cover the pre-K students as well? It does, and I was asked about that as well. And last year, talking with um, our coordinator um, of our early learning program, I realized that it was not day one that we brought our pre-K into it. Anybody with a four-year-old knows that that's not going to happen day one. They're going to need some time to be able to learn how to use masks, and I believe she said it was um, as late as November before that really started to happen. We also would continue to be patient as long as it takes a four-year-old to be able to learn how to protect themselves with that mask. Okay. Thanks. So I guess I'm still curious as far as um, hearing what is the metrics to make decisions as far as when masking will, will be, be done or subsided, because even I reference Dr. Schaefer mentioned that, you know, once transmission subsides, well, what does that mean? Like, mm -hmm. what is our data point for that? The, I'm sorry, I forgot that part of your question. The data that we were suggesting as written in the um, agenda was when we hit the moderate by the CDC. That's the, that's the metric that we are using to um, identify when to open the schools back up to visitors, so we would continue to use that same metric. And when we hit moderate, which I believe, Dina, correct me, is uh, 5 to 7.99 percent transmission rate, I wouldn't say day one. We're going to say, okay, no mask. There, we need to see some consistency in that. So we would revisit that and reconsult with medical 
to determine if that was stable enough that we would be able to go back out of it. And it will be like a one size fits all. It's not going to be like a building by building. Like if a building is say at zero for many mm -hmm. days or weeks at that time, mm -hmm. we wouldn't consider that. Right. Just the same as we. My recommendation is to not consider eliminating different grade band levels because of that sibling. There could be siblings. The other consideration that I think is important is the data that's in the dashboard is self-reported. And I, I think I heard a couple of people say that there were questions on whether or not that data is accurate. I, I can't sit here and tell you that that's 100% accurate either because we only can go by what is self-reported to us. And there are, I am not going to be surprised, families who oh, it's just a sniffle, go to school, don't tell anybody you have COVID or whatever. I know, I know there's, we all know that that happens. So we have to take that data as knowing that and keeping that in mind. So it's great that it looks low. I would, I would love to say that that's 100%, but I can't confidently do that. I'd like to ask, okay. Um, I watched some of the other board meetings and I did hear express and I, I'm kind of concerned because we have pretty low masking at this point. Um, <clears throat> how, um, what we would do for enforcement um, and um, how that would be handled. Um, I have a deep concern for uh, the teachers <laughs> in classrooms and administrators I and but I also have a very deep concern as most of you know for those medically compromised I mean I have people in my family that would fit that category so the premise of this case um, is deeply concerning for those students who have those kind of issues and the parents I mean they've already got a burden that fortunately most of us don't carry and um, so that's a deep concern. But my other concern is, you know, day to day um, for teachers and, and, and administrators, uh, how that, I mean, what, what, what will we do when people don't, don't wear them? Well, I wish I had a wand <laughs> that I could wave over all of this and make it go away. Yeah. Um, that has been a question that was brought up with the administration and um, pending the board outcome tonight, there is an opportunity for me to get in front of our administrators tomorrow. We already have a time set aside to work on some, um, some tasks. So this was going to be part of our continued conversation. Ultimately, the, the general answer that I can give you that would apply to both adults and to students is, is progressive discipline. Of course, progressive discipline always starts at the very, can you please pull your mask up, can you please put your mask on, all the way up to where, depending on how defiant the individual became, then you would seek different consequences. It is not my desire to send teachers home, it is not my desire to send students home. The whole point of what we do is to educate students. So it, it's hard for me to give you an answer other than that, so at that point, that would be where I would start. And I think I have a major concern about that with some of our youngest learners when we're going to be spending the whole time redirecting than we are instructing. So for me, that's um, very di disheartening when I think about our little children that need the instruction the most. And I, I know they can do it. We saw that they could do it last year. I, I think it's now they're going to be relearning a behavior because they haven't had to do it. So now we're going to be having to reteach, relearn, and then there could be disciplinary consequences. So I'm, that's, a, that's a big concern for me. That's a concern for us as well. So we have any other clarifications, questions? Catherine, I apologize. I do have one more, one more question. Can you hear me okay? Let me get closer to the mic. Um, my question is if the 
temporary restraining order is appealed and it is it's reversed and we can no longer require masks Stop. what will we do if the temporary restraining order is is appealed and they win and it pulls back that i think speaks to the um, frustration with some of our public speakers that we could be saying okay this week there's a mask next week there's not a mask this week's a mask and I think that's where some of the other districts um, made the decision to put a pause um, there are some districts that put a pause because they are party to the lawsuit and there are other legal considerations that they need to be concerned with so that could be that could be a problem trying to get our youngest kids especially to understand it's kind of like when you're when you're disciplining your child and and you know mom says it's okay to do that but dad's trying to get them not to do that and they're going back and forth and back and forth that's that's not a, a that's a hard situation I don't know what that would look like I mean the speed of the courts is dependent on how important I somebody just thinks know it if is we need to reconvene another board meeting or something that's vested in you under the policy 209 that you would automatically just reverse it or will it call for another board meeting I don't I think, know sorry. if we are you asking if say tonight you guys said you voted to have a mask and then that got reversed I think the way that I put it in here that it would only be applicable as long as we were legally allowed to do it okay thank okay. you thank you for clarification First, I want to say thank you for coming tonight. Um, we have been at a lot of board meetings over the past four years where no one came, um, where we were making very big decisions about multi-million dollar budgets and investment in building. Um, and I'm glad that parents are getting involved, truly. Um, I know personally um, there's disagreement along along this issue but from the bottom of my heart I just am thankful that parents um, on both sides care very passionately love their kids your passion comes from the love of your kids that's why we are here too so we do have that in common I believe um, that we can give each other a little bit of grace in this so I, I do truly thank everyone for their comments um, is, is there more discussion then I would move to approve the administrators, administration's recommendation um, with their recommendation one, mask required pre-K to 12 staff and students regardless of vaccination status. Anderson, second. Okay. So we'll need to do a roll call. Stacy Anderson. Yes. Ashley Anderson. Yes. Judy Downs? Yes. Katherine Hauser? I can't do it at this time, no. Brianna Sarah Geyser? No. Sarah Schmitz? Yes. Mark Smith? No. Motion carries. So the recommendation passes. I would like to make one final comment, which I've made at other meetings. They will not, if there is a special education need, those students will be dealt with individually to provide them what they need. They will not be required if that is part of their individual need. So I'd like to say, you know, if things go well, this, this plague will end as we know it. And some of the broken relationships that have happened will not. There is an end in sight, and most of you have discussed that tonight. There is. And I would invite you again to treat each other with grace. I know you don't feel that I did that, but we could not have chaos here tonight. We could not. And so that's why I did that. I do thank all of you for coming. I thank all of you for caring and loving your kids the way we love them. So at this, maybe we have an adjournment? A uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh,
I think there's students that might need their government form. Yeah. If we have any students that need your forms signed for Gov hours, come on up, please. Any of us can sign them. Government. Gov. 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 Gov hours. <laughs>